Hello, and welcome to the Every Speaker in Zeos' House. I just did every headphone in my house. It took about an hour and 40 minutes. Um, I changed the wallpaper. That one's a little too risque, so I may not be linking it in the description, but I will be on the wallpaper hoard. In fact, it's already there because I, I literally just dragged it into the folder, so it should be there. So if you want that wallpaper, join the Resilio Sync Hoard, which is linked in the description of this video, because that doesn't fucking matter. Anyway, did all the headphones. Speaker time, everybody. Peanut butter speaker time. Um, we'll move her over. She could stay over there. We need to figure out where we're beginning. I guess we'll begin with the floor level and work our way up. Um, those are the Super Daytons down here. And if you don't know what the Super Daytons are, you got to go way back in my channel to like 2013, 2014. Um, I built these. If I can take the cover off of one. Please come off without breaking. Oh, it's tight. She tight. Oh, bro, she tight. <laughs> Jesus, I almost did a thing. Please use that sound on um, TikTok if you can. Why is everything so difficult? There we go. So, uh, Dayton B652s were my like original speaker. Uh, Steve Gutenberg was like, hey, these speakers are really great and they're cheap. They're like $40 a pair. And I got a set and Steve Gutenberg was right. They're a sealed six and a half inch. And I used to sell them. What am I saying used to sell them? I used to recommend that people buy them on Reddit. That's how I made my famous, that's how I became famous. It wasn't headphones, it was those speakers. I read those and the Dayton little amplifier and that's all I told people to buy. It was on Reddit, it was on our audio file before I was banned. It was on our headphones before I was banned. And I would just tell people to buy these, buy these, buy these. Why don't you buy these? And it got so hard copy. I actually had to make a text document where I would copy paste. The light, like someone would come on our audio file or our headphones back when they were teeny tiny, like 10,000 subs. And they would be like, hey, I have this much budget. I want headphones and speakers from a desk. And I would only recommend those because that's all I knew. And it got to the point where I just had a copy pasted text document where I just literally pop it on there and have all the formatting and everything. It's great. And then I had the brilliant idea to make the RZOS subreddit. So I made my own subreddit instead of linking just a little copy pasting a thing, I would say go to RZS because it was so easy to do that on Reddit. It's like slash R slash ZS and it would become a link. Go there and you'll see my list of things I tell you should you should buy. And then when I took over our headphones, no, no, when I took over our home theater, I didn't take over our headphones. I wish. Um, when I took over our home theaters, I um, the guy there, Factor V, was like, hey, have you ever heard of affiliate links? And I'm like, no. And then I'm like, oh, so if I link people things, I can make money on them? And then we're here, but which is why I probably, which is why I got banned from our headphones and our audio file because I made everything in our Zeos an affiliate link, which started actually generating a certain amount of income. And then become like, oh, I should probably do YouTube videos, and that's how it all started. That's how all of this fucking started. So as soon as you can make money making recommendations, all of a sudden it's like light bulb. Oh yeah, I didn't know there was a thing. So the Dayton's. We're still the ones recommended, and they were on Amazon at that time. I think they were on Amazon. I was linking people to Parts Express, and then it was not. And I bought enough of them, I was going to try to resell them. And I had so many of them on sale. I got them for like $20 on sale. I don't even know how the fuck I had money to buy them. Maybe I convinced my father. That I actually took three of them, um, removed all the drivers, stuck them together. Like literally this foam between them, and I bolted together. So there's three six and a halves in sealed boxes. I closed up all the holes for the tweeters. I put all the tweeters into this cluster. In fact, this is the cluster. These are the, oh, please don't do this to me. It's just, it's, just, it's been a while. I, I, this, is, this, is, this is me becoming a, an audiophile. I went through the crazy stage first. That's why I can deal with this shit. Here are the tweeters for the, uh, the uh, oh my God, they're so dusty. So these are the actual tweeters clustered as close as I can get them together and wired together. And there were little, little resistors I kept on there. And this would sit on the inside of that, so the closest to the drivers or the outside of it. And these were in my grandparents' house in that little room I started my reviews in. And as far as I was concerned, these were the best speakers anyone's ever fucking heard. Combine that with that uh, Design Acoustics passive subwoofer, which I added the knob to to adjust the, the, the volume on that running off my father's Pioneer D1S, which is still one of the best speaker amps that exists, especially in this house. And you have the start of this channel. 
you have me becoming a speaker lover more than a headphone lover or an anime lover even but um yeah yeah no shit so i'm gonna eventually hook these back up uh like the effort I put into this to drill the holes to get them closed. Like I was gonna slice the fucking wave guy, I didn't do it. I just overlapped them. So that's the first pair of speakers and that's the important pair of speakers. That's that's Genesis of Zeos. Not even Z Reviews. So Genesis of Z Reviews is the fact that I, I make money while reviewing things, that's amazing. And then the second thing was I like, go oh, buy all these Dayton's and that's the reason I have so many fucking Dayton's to do. I don't even think I have a singular pair just around. I don't think I have a pair of them around. So there's that. I'm going to jump over here for a quick second. Um, Swan M50Ws is a 2.1. There's a subwoofer. It's a little six and a half inch. I don't think it's an eight. Are you a six and a half inch or an eight? You might be a six and a half inch sub with a set of speakers. It had that cool uh, circular knob for just volume. It was tap on, on, tap on, off. That was my speaker setup for my, my desk at my old apartment. Before I moved to this house, that was it. I couldn't fit it. I was like a little corner desk and I was floating the monitor. I put the speakers behind the monitor just with like that much space so the tweeters could shoot underneath and the subwoofer sat on the desk behind it. And it was fucking amazing. And um, I'll never sell them because they, they're, they're swans for fuck's sake. So here they are. If you want to know there, here are little swans, little fucking tiny little baby swans. So good. We'll get up to my office and we'll look at that in a, in a minute. But yeah, that 2.1, uh, I sold the Edifier, the S350 dB. And I sold it because this is better. The Swan sounded better. Didn't have as many options, didn't have remote control. But as far as like walk into the room, tap the big knob to turn it on, and then analog control and tap to turn it off, it was amazing. Um, left to right. We'll go from left to center. Uh, actually, no, we're good. Yeah, we'll do left to right bottom. Those are Canto Yumi's. Those are a passive set of Cantos. I have them mirrored. So there's the other set. And they're in blue, and I love them because of the color, and they're covered in Chewbacca's hair. is still all down here because cleaning ladies don't come down and visit. I miss you, Chewbacca. Throw that right into the heater. Um, those things are blue and passive. Canto no longer makes passive. They no longer make, like, that color blue. And they were my kitchen speakers at Narberth for years. They just sat in my kitchen. And they got all greasy and dusty, but they looked interesting and they sounded good enough. Were they RB42s? No. We're going to use a lot of references to RB42 during this video. Don't worry. Um, there's actually another Canto right there, a Canto Ben. We'll go up to my uh, sunroom and you'll see the other two Canto Bens. I actually have three of those from a shipping error in Amazon where I ordered a pair. One shows up. And I'm like, hey, only one showed up. And then they sent me the pair. So I got three, which is an odd thing to have. We've got... MB42s, excuse me, Ray. Here are MB42 X's because they're the, the textured, they're just the straight flat texture, like the rough texture. And then behind there, ugh, our original MB42, oh, these might be the X's and those might be the MB42s because those have the the uh, original um, black ash thing. So there's some MB42s and MB42 X's, Canto Ben's, Canto Ben. Singular. We've got the Swans, and then we have the Super Daytons. Super Daytons. That we call. Them. I call them the Super Daytons. Canto Yumi's. I think they're the Yumi. I'm gonna fucking turn you over on it. Yumi. Big fucking letters. Okay, great. Oh my god, I touched the dust, and now all I see is a dust. One day I'm just gonna pay the cleaning ladies extra and be like, come down and dust fucking everything. I'm I'm done with this. These are Design Acoustics PS Ten As, given to me by my friend. Well, given to me by my former friend who has a YouTube channel, which I will not pimp, because he fucked my brother over a little bit. If you're watching, Phil, why'd you do that? We're Italian, you can't do that. He basically told my brother's ex-boss, my brother finally quit his, his job he had for like 10 years, and um, like he left on a decent note, like no one wants to have an employee leave after that long, but he had, he had life to live and move on to. And so, like, they left on good terms, and then fucking Phil goes and shit talks him for fucking, like, oh, yeah, he hated you, and he hated working here. Like, why would you do that? Don't be a piece of shit. That's something you keep your friends, and, you know, be, or acquaintances, whatever. Anyway, he gave me these. They're disgusting. He had, like, carpet. You can see the bottom is still covered. Like, look at the glue. So these were nice speakers at some point. Then he carpeted them because he was a dumb kid, and everyone's a dumb kid at some point and fucks up their speakers. But he was a rich dumb kid. So he carpeted it, but then he put in these, like, actual phase plugged drivers 
and I think a different tweeter for the PS10s. And in the bottom, of, these are interesting speakers. I've never hooked them up. He gave them to me back in like 2016, and I never hooked them up. There's a down firing eight. So it's got these little miniature drivers and little thing, and there's a down firing eight in this giant fucking box. Or, no, I'm sorry, these are PS10s. This is a down firing 10. And my father would, would wax lyrical about, because he used to sell speakers like this. Oh man, the design because of PS10, here's how you run those. You take the bass off, because there's a, 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 a bottom. Then there's a 10 inch driver firing into the bass. You take that bass off, you lay them on their side, you fire the 10 inch into the wall, and then you have this amazing fucking speaker because they're mirrored. So you get tweeter, mid-range, 10 inch ba firing base out to the side so i've yet to do that because the finish on them is just so disgusting i hate looking at them but they're a vintage set of design acoustics ps10s i'm not throwing them away and they got nice really nice upgraded drivers in there i'm not sure if you did the crossover too but phil if you're watching come back to me man come, come apologize to my brother and come back I, I miss talking to you he was a good guy to shoot the shit with um adam audio t5v's I pulled those out recently. I've had those out multiple times in this house. Like these, these I never take out. Never take it out, never take it out, never listen to it once. Adam T5Vs were the default $400 buy a set of head, you need a, I've had headphones, I'm still in headphones. You need a set of speakers that doesn't suck. They're super deep. They get low enough, they're fun. They're not just like, a lot of the Adam stuff, the higher end Adam stuff is just boring. But the T5Vs were never boring. And the T7Vs, were a little bit more boring, but they were actually useful for like mixing and mastering. But the T5Vs, you could afford $400, you could afford them. You put them on your desk and they'd be fucking impressed by these German designed speakers. And I pulled them out for the rear channels when I had my temporary setup there. I pulled them out recently for the rear channels, back channels as my temporary setup over there for the Atmos video. They're just a useful, nice set of speakers with a fucking ribbon tweeter or a, um, a folded, what's it called? It's not a called a ribbon. What, what is, what are, what are you? AM, Air, AMT. You're an air motion tweeter because you do a thing. Anyway, that's an AMT. That's an AMT. So yeah, I love those things and absolutely worth $400 to this moment. To this moment. There's a couple other options now, which we'll get to, but to this moment, still worth $400. My first set of swans. Zeos' first swan. Swan contacted me back in like 27, 16. Sent me this set of M200s. Mark, Mark 1s. I don't even know. If we have a mark, I'm going to dust everything off my hand while we're doing this. And um, immediately New Swan was my favorite speaker company. That's it. They still remain that to this day. That free set of speakers cost me to spend 1200 on those, which we'll get to. Are there any other Swans here? No, I'll tell you why there's no Swans here, because they're all in my home theater. Um, fucking amazing self-powered speakers. Started to develop a little bit of like a buzz. I was using them as my desk speakers before the before those Swans. Before those swans, which I like over the Edifier S300, these are my swans, but only when my monitor was like against the wall flat. When I went to the sideways monitor, I couldn't, there was physically no desk here to put another speaker, so I ended up taking those and storing them, I guess. What did I do with you? I love you too much to store. I don't know what I did with you. Anyway, love those swans. Um, there are the swans here. I'm looking at them. They're right, they're right next to it. Those swans proved what DSP correction could do. Those were my first taste, and they're old, and the new ones are so much better, it's fucking absurd. Um, these are Swan, DIY uh, 3.1s. I had to build the box, they come with the boxes, came in pieces, and it came with the drivers, and it came with the crossover, assembled. I didn't have to build, I don't think I had to assemble the cross, did I have to assemble the crossover? Fuck, I don't remember if I had to assemble the crossover for those. I did a whole video on the Swan DIY 3.1s. These speakers were like $255, just in pieces. It was a $255 kit. And if you look real carefully, like if I pulled off this, this thing off the driver, you see an AMT, a two inch soft dome mid-range, and a six and a half inch real phase plug driver. But that's nice high vi driver shit. Oh, hey, you look exactly the same. In fact, you are exactly the same. Pretty much the same drivers in that $250 set are in these $1,200 speakers, which we're getting to. Those are the Swan M3As. But I bought that kit first and I built them. And there were some issues, like the, like there's a piece of foam over the tweeter because it was just too, it was too harsh. But there was so much potential for volume. Like I know Racing Mars, if you know Racing Mars, you gotta come to my streams more. He bought a set of these, built them and actually did a finish on them. And that's in his listening room, that's it. He just has these. I think if you would play with amplifiers enough, or even just tweak it with a DSP, just like on your own, 
they'd become as good as those. But we're, again, we're getting to those. Um, so yeah, is it worth it? Fuck yeah. If you're using a home theater, fuck yeah. If you listen to music directly, I would tweak the tweeter a little bit. Either change the crossover design or do something. Um, Kef Q100s. The Kef Q100s are the prettiest speakers that have ever been and ever will be. They had like that silver, I, I'm gonna take the camera off my head, hold on, I'm gonna bring this down low so you guys can really experience the, um, cause you're not, you're not getting it. The silver metal domed thing, the line, the port in the front, front ported, the pretty wooden box, the wooden, the, the, the dark colored wooden box. Oh God, I wish they still sold those, specifically those, cause those things were near field fucking sex. There's so much dust down here now that I'm actually filming it low. I, 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 they're great. And I don't think the new calves sound as good as those. Those things were, they're slightly softer, but they had enough low end. They did everything I wanted out of a speaker and they were like $300, 250. Couldn't beat them, could not beat them for the longest time. And then they disappeared. Um, moving on to these, a newer addition to the, oh my God, obsessive thing. These are the Yamo uh, S803s in white. They're a cheap as fuck set of speakers, like $150 to $180. Front ported again. Um, you could give or take that that fucking tweeter design. The box is a strange wedge with mounting points on top to be an Atmos. But my these are the only speakers that compete in price and performance to the RB42s, which are up there, by the way, little tiny ones. We'll get to those. In fact, let me give you a little scan back of all the speakers I've talked about so far because it's going to be a lot easier. Here are those design acoustics, which are fucking huge. Those, 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 yeah. So anyway, now we're out of the bottom realm. These, just these, when they're on sale, buy a set. Those will do your entire home theater and they're better than the tower versions because it was designed specifically to have one driver and one tweeter, and it's great. When you have the tower version with three drivers, it only still does three drivers to try to do the job, but one driver doesn't work out. Um, let's move straight up. I'm gonna put my head, headset back on. You can look at my crotch for a second, it's great. I don't remember your model number. I'm so sorry, Yamos. These Yamos were an immediate purchase for me for like $240. They're super small, four inch, just like the the RB42s, they're a top, this is the correct orientation. The word Yamo is written correctly. So they're a tweeter on the bottom, phase plug, legit phase plug, fucking weird ass fucking speaker, little tiny things. Sound fucking amazing. You couldn't push them too hard, only a four inch driver and phase plug means it leaks air a little bit, but they just looked like there's so many screw holes and holes and oh, I was, that's why they're the centerpiece of my fucking thing. I love the way those look. The yellow, the, like the bug eye here. Fucking, mm, mm. I wish I knew what their model, I, I would tell you their model number, but I can't. So find it out on your own. I'm sure it won't be that hard. Someone in the comments will be like, oh, Zio, so I was like, oh, and I'll be like, oh yeah, of course they are. Totally knew that. Uh, next to them in white and bright white, just like those are white, these are white. These are the Bucart S200s. Bucart made, small speakers at some point. These are only a five and a quarter. If I pulled one out, which I can if I am very careful with like literally everything else on this fucking plane of existence, please slide out. Oh, I fucked it. It's taken the, it's taken the, uh, the hemp's with it. Please don't take the hemp's with it. Pull them out. These were unique because there are two passive five and a quarters. So they stopped making these because they were too expensive, but my God, the finish, which has some scratches on it, which is not good. I should put something on top of this before I put headphones back on it. I think those are not from there, but <sighs> these were expensive. These were like $800 a pair and they didn't get very loud. There's a spider web on it, but my God, they low end because of these. No ports, Bucart's against ports. He's like, fuck ports, ports are for idiots. And I couldn't be more happy about that because those things, when you actually run these on like a desk against a wall, you have to run them in the right position or they don't work. When you run those things, yeah, these are soft pads. These are not scratching it. It's fine. Just don't drop anything, you idiot. There we go. 
Um, yeah, fucking Bucart. I mean, Bucart. Bucart, I don't know. Is Swan my favorite audio company or Bucart? Because Swan made one or two sets that I reviewed. I was like, eh, they were like passive sets that I wasn't super into, and that like, needs to be worked on. But Bucart's never made a loser, ever. We'll get to them. There's more coming. Um, the Fluid Audio FPX 7s? Self-powered. This is our, how I many we got? Passive, self-powered, self-powered, passive, passive, passive. Um, passive, passive, self-powered. These are fucking weird. And the company that contacted me gave these to me years ago. That's the volume knob, by the way. I don't know why you would do a slider volume knob. Because you know, even though it notches in, it's like, that's not way to do it. But... Only speaker I've ever seen in existence that does a floating coaxial designed AMT. So six and a half inch or six inch, six and a half inch, I think, with a floating AMT wave, uh, floating AMT coaxial front ported, really weird like egg design. I'm not going to pull it out, obviously. And these speakers suck to enjoy music on. They're terrible at enjoying music. But... If you want to know what's wrong with your music, these, they just let you know. They're like, oh, by the way, you know how, uh, you know how you love Green Day? Yeah, you love Green Day. Ah, dookie. <laughs> no, you don't. Listen to the recording quality. It's garbage. And he's like, I have to agree with you, Fluid. Fluid, you're right. It is the worst recording quality. And I hate myself for enjoying it ever all those years. I apologize. That's what these Fluids do. That's why they're here and never got sold. Because they were originally like $1,100. Now they dropped like way. They're like $600 for the set. Um, if you look them up on Amazon. I'll, I'll do generic links in the description if you want to like just search any of these out. I'll try to remember all the names. Um, but yeah, they are, they are a thing. They are a force to fuck your music right up. And they do it in a good way. Like it's, it's like it's like I understand what you're doing. You're designed to be powered studio monitors. You're supposed to tell me how my song is, and my song fucking sucks. I've enjoyed music on it. Really well recorded stuff is like, oh, I can assess this. Is like this is pretty perfect. But then actually just trying to like enjoy music on it, no, cannot do. Um, moving over, triangle. These were either called the Alaras or the Ellen. LN01As. These are an eggplant. And they were the latest in the speakers that came to compete with the Vanna 2 T1 Encores, the Canto Tux. These were in that like $700 range. And they're done by Triangle. But you don't know Triangle, Triangle also has been swapping, swapping in and out to be my favorite speaker brand. They've actually had more L's recently than, than W's. But this is a W. These speakers are creamy, smooth, French-tuned fucking self-powered. In fact, I have their bigger brothers, or I have their newer brothers, the AIO twins, in for review. They're, they're going to set up over there. We'll go look at those in a minute. And according to the guy from Triangle, he's like, these are the same tuning as those. The new ones just have more features, and they're $1,000. And it's hard because some of the features they have make me want to shoot myself in the face. But these Alaras, these LNR1As, if you can, in Europe, they're like $400. You're fucking, if you ever come to me and you're from Europe, I'm like, get these triangles. They're French. Just, they have them in France. Go get them. Go buy them in eggplant if you want, if you want this color, which I really do like. They're some of the cleanest, like there's no, there's no bolt holes or nothing. In it. They're just clean. Clean fascia, clean looks, amazing sound, just enough features to be like, oh, ooh, ooh. Um, moving left. This is an Emotiva Air Motive 6. I owned, I bought and owned all the Air Motive speakers at some point. I even reviewed a set of the Stealth that someone loaned me. Um, these were my permanent, semi-permanent home theater speaker. In my living room, I was a these were self-powered speakers. Emotiva made a whole line of, of studio monitors that were self-powered, and the five-inch one was a little tiny driver, kind of like that. And this was a, the six-inch one went bigger, and the eight-inch one kept its exact same size tweeter with an eight-inch. But these were a 210 watt a piece. I think it was 100 watts for this and 110 watts for this, and it's got this like weird like fake leather finish and these are probably to this second 
still the loudest self-powered speakers I've ever had in my possession. And I, I had the cops wave a fucking flashlight, like, like wave their spotlight into my apartment because one night at 1.30 in the morning with the top of my windows open in my old apartment, Tron Legacy happened to come on and it was like, oh, I'm just going to fuck it. I'm just going to fuck it. I'm just going to fuck it. And I fucked it. And it was so good. These things are... There's not. It's a fake waveguide. It's the only thing I have. But I guess it wouldn't get as loud if it didn't have a. a I'm sorry, face plug. Yeah, these are monsters. These are these are legit. Forty pounds a piece. Month. There's a toroidal transform the size of the six and a half on the back of it. They're 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 dumb. I wish they still sold stuff like this because Emotiva is an amplifier company, so they put amplifiers in it. It makes perfect sense. But. When I was done with these, I put these for my home theater. And these, which I gotta give them a little bit more space so we have an even, a more even look. Hold on. These are Bucart S300 Mark 1s. I have to say the Mark 1 part because there's Mark 2s that are easier to drive. These are insanely hard to drive due to the crossover. They're also upside down, but I like the tweeter on the bottom. It's my thing. Um, because then you get the sound, whatever, shut up. Um, I've taken these out more recently, so not that dusty. <sighs> these were these came with the 200s. The 200s and the 300s showed up at the exact same time, and I paid for them. I paid half. He's like, "You want to want me to loan them to you, and I'll take them back, or do you want me to give them to you and you pay half price?" This is the first pairs of boot carts in the United States. Those 200s and these 300s. And when I got them and I hooked them up, and I went, "Oh, oh, this is what high-end Danish audio sounds like." All right, everything else is fucking garbage. Okay, that's, that's literally was my idea. And I actually blew one of the drivers out. I blew one of the six and a halves. I don't know which one it was. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't know. Um, because my cousin came over. We did his bachelor party. Like, we just went shooting. And we did, like, we hung out and drank in my apartment. And it was time to watch Mad Max Fury Road. And my home theater has always been fucking complicated nightmares. And I forgot to go into the mini DSP and switch it from music listening, pure speaker, to you're about to watch a movie disable the low end from getting shoved at this at full volume. I forgot to do that. We were drunk and we're watching Mad Max and it goes rah, 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 and all of a sudden the driver just crashes and completely fucking destroys itself. Just one, luckily, not the other one. And I was so sad because these are, they're super deep. Like they go, this is where they end. They end here. They're basically a square. It's this high and that deep. It's the exact same dimensions. And for just a very light, because I usually you could judge a speaker by how intense and angry it can get. A little bit of inside knowledge. If you touch the surround, which you're not, don't like jam your finger into it, just like brush against it like you would a beautiful woman's face when you're like wiping a tear away. Like, oh, it's a very soft surround, rubber surround, very soft. This, stiff as fuck. This, stiff as fuck. This, mm, still stiff. This, super soft. Bucards are super soft. This, stiff as fuck. If it's stiff as fuck, it means you could fucking aggressively fuck with it. But if it's super soft, it's a delicate, it's a lady. It'll, it's it's going to move for you. Even though it's got the crossover that says, no, I don't want to use it. So I blew the shit out of it. Had it replaced, burned it back. I used it as a center channel for like three weeks. Just one speaker to break in the driver to try to be even with the other one. Or maybe broke in that one. I don't know. I didn't mark it. Because I know my OCD would make me crazy. Um, but yeah, these were, these might still be... The de my my favorite sounding Bucart speaker. There are better technical speakers. The, the S four hundreds. I'm going to talk about over there, and certainly the A five hundreds and shit with the DSP correction. But as far as like passive Danish, these, these. By the way, A seven hundreds on their way. Finally, fucking finally. I can't wait to make those my favorite speakers of all time and fuck everything else. Especially sends them in white. Um. So yeah, these. The Mark IIs, I would absolutely still recommend. That's why he still sells them. He didn't just replace the 300s with the 400s. The 400s are a different breed of speaker we'll get to. 300s? Mmm. Mmm. These used to be part of my um, headphone wall. My headphone wall in my old apartment. If you look at my headphone wall in my old apartment, there was... It was built with shelving, like pieces of wood. And there was like 13 headphones up there. But the actual shelves were stacked speakers. There was a speaker, shelf, speaker, shelf, speaker. And those were the very top speakers on the shelf. So I could still take them off and use them. Those actually had those Monogatari girls on them in the old apartment. Then these were the middle 
shelf speakers, so I could never use them. I reviewed them, and I fucking loved them. These are the Klipsch RP50... RP150M. And this is the first example of a Klipsch speaker that I've ever heard that didn't kill me with a tweeter. In fact, not only did this horn tweeter not kill me, I gave these a full fucking endorsement, I still do this day, for near field desktop use. They're tall enough you don't need a speaker stand, because that's that's a fucking tall boy. And they are five and a quarter, relatively stiff surround, and they actually are good near field. Blew my fucking mind. And then I needed a set of speakers that was just the right height to put on for this for the headphone thing. In fact, they have a slightly angled base, which helped because the table kept sinking. So having the second shelf on top of those meant the shelf tilted. And then when the table sunk, it was it was a whole mechanical thing. I was very proud of it. Um, no, again, no, again, just like the Alars, no showing hardware. Very dirty. This is all rubber, by the way. Rubber, complete rubber. This is rubberized, so there's just dust stuck to all of it. And these things, these were a near field speaker, and I love them. You, you motherfuckers. These are the Yamo um, C103s, and I'm tilting them out, not to look at the model number, just to look at the, to finger the port one last time and to touch on this fucking finish, because this. These speakers made me a bunch of money, not just from affiliate linking them and selling them out on Amazon, but these speakers, something went wrong in the world, and these speakers should have been $1,200 for a pair. Six and a half, real fucking phase plug. This acoustically, like this is a floating, like look, I could push it, and it moves. This is a floating waveguide. The finish on this, this is legit walnut, like with the edges, and it's got a curved box. These are fucking gorgeous. No hardware showing fucking monsters. It was like listening to a wall of sound before walls of sound were walls of sound. And I got these sets. I got seven or eight sets of these. When, after I reviewed them, and I, I think it was right before the review aired, they were on Amazon for $130 a piece. $130 a pair. A pair. Not a piece. A pair. $130 a pair. You understand? These fucking speakers? A pair? So the first thing I did was I ordered like five of them. And then I told my family to order them and no one listened. And then I to told my friend Cheese to order them and he listened. And he's got a set of these in a closet. You fuck Cheese, take them out. He's got them in black. There were three finishes. There was white, black, and then this like, like natural fucking oak or something. I forget what the actual name was. And I sold these in the yard sale for a minimum bid of like $600. So I bought them for 150 and I sold them all. And I was willing to ship them internationally. And that's when I figured out when you ship a box as big as the box was for these, and it was a big box, to South Africa, it costs you $350. So that minimum bid I have, like $600, fuck. I still made like $80 on that, but oh my God. That would, don't ship dig things to South Africa. But these speakers... I had them set up when I first moved into the house. Before I even had like my refrigerator on, I had these set up over in the spot where I'm doing my listening thing because DMS was helping me move. I set these up, DMS listened to them, my friend Dan listened to them because he was helping me move. I forget what amplifier I had them on and they, DMS was like, mm, mm, yes, mm, because DMS is DMS. But Dan was like, these are the greatest things I've ever heard and I want to set and you can't get them. So... And these were the, the Emma Watson of speakers, before Emma Watson was a feminist and was still a woman, was the smaller version of this, the five and a quarter version, which was the C93 Dark Apple was the finish on those. So yeah, mm, there's, a, there's, a, there's a story in these. I fucking love these. And I, I kept one set, just this one set of the, with, the, with the best finish. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of talking to do in these next two though. Um, if you don't know what these are, go watch my review of the Studio 530s. I didn't have to look at the back for the name. I just wanted to tilt them off because I want to show you that they're not very deep. They're actually, they're very, very tall. They're actually tallest ones on the whole shelf. They should be on the outside. Five and a quarter, not a very big driver. Five and quarters are here. That's a six and a half. That's a six and a half. That's a five. Maybe even a five. There might even be a five and a quarter. A little tiny fucking driver. But holy shit, does anyone notice that that is a waveguide? Um, these speakers... Was the word redefined? Have I used the word redefined like 900 times already? Um, I didn't know that this 
was a thing that could be done. JBL puts these out. I, I get a set from a guy who buys them on Amazon, ships them to me for $600. He's like, all right, can you review them and send them back to me? And um, I get them and I use them out of phase. I had one plugged in backwards for like two and a half hours. And I'm like, these speakers are doing something weird. And I'm listening to them and I'm, uh, I don't really like them. And I'm, yeah, okay, I guess I'll give them the review. Uh, and then I realize I'm dumb and fix the phase. And I think that two hours was building up this like negative energy. Like I was pushing my, my energy down to the review. It was like low, it was getting real low. Like, oh, they're so, I was expecting so much, it looks so cool. And then I fixed the phase issue where there was one canceling out the other and then all of a sudden they were in phase. And the the instead of just coming back up to a normal level, it rebounded and shot my ejaculate straight through the roof and into the heavens. And the angels were like, ah! Because that is what these speakers do. Because that horn convinced me that I like horns. And as much as I like Klipsch, JB, fuck. Um, even with the little tiny driver, this thing produced enough low end that I was like, oh my lord. And then that horn was able to fill a room, not just like a little, not like a little desk, like a room. And then I put him on my desk, and that's when the real sex uh, analogies come. In fact, if you watch my review of that, I play an R. Kelly song. Which, um, where this speaker uh, literally fucks my wallet. The only intro to a video I've ever done where it like actually took effort and like editing and I had to set something up and drag it with a stick. Like it was terrible. It was red letter media back in like 2008 levels of animation. But I did it and I showed it humping a thing to an R. Kelly song. Because that was, and what I did was the guy who sent me the set for $600, I was like, look, I'm not giving these back to you. And I'm not going to pay you $600. What I'll do is I'll buy a set for $600 and have it shipped to you. This way, if anything happens to the set you sent me, I'll just say it's the set I sent you. And if anything happens to the set I sent you, you just say it's the set I sent me. And Because I, I couldn't want to let, didn't wanna let them go. I didn't want to risk this being different from the one I got. So and I got like three or four pairs since then. And they're always this good. And there are better near field speakers than anything that's ever been. Well, we'll there might be one or two that are better now, but those are like self-powered DSP corrected. These for passive speakers. Oh! And you don't think it's gonna because it's such a far distance between this and this. On your desk, you'd figure you want it close. You want a coaxial so the sound is coming from one point. But no, something about this just like throws on your, on your fucking desk. The, the mids, all the mid-range, then you just get that like sparkle of like fully holographic highs and it's fucking orgasmic. I need to have a glass of a drink of water in a bit. Um, before I do that, let's finish up with with at least this row. These. So I've had I've already given up my uh, my virginity to Swan as of there we go. My virginity to Swan is already well well in the bag. Someone someone took my V card. It's fine. It's fine. Don't don't worry about that. Um, so at some point. I saw that these existed. In fact, I probably saw that these existed when doing the research into the DIY 3.1s. And I'm like, hey, aren't those the same drivers? I really like the way these sound. And I got them for $250, but there's this $1,200 set on Amazon. And I, I tried to reach back out to Swan because they sent me those years ago and they wouldn't get back to me or they couldn't get back to me or I couldn't find the email. I forget what the problem was. But I, I bought these. I spent twelve hundred of my my dollars. It's the most I've ever spent on speakers with my own money, because I I needed to know. I had to know, because I knew what DSP correction did to those little fucks. God, there's so much dust. I know what the DSP correction did to that, and I'm like, I like these, but I feel like they could be better. And the reviews on Amazon were like, absolutely absurd. Look at the cute little baby remote. So I bought them, and they showed up. And if I could tilt this off the shelf a little bit without getting myself a hernia. You know what? I don't think I can. I, I don't know I can't because it's too it's too deep and too tall and the wood is like bulges out. Go find my review of it. And I was pretty sure that once these arrived, the problem with these speakers are they're too good to use anywhere but dead in front of you in an audiophile listening setup. The low end, perfect. The mid-range. It's got a dome mid-range. You don't see those anymore. 
which means that's where the vocals are coming in. It's shooting in every direction. It's not like, oh, well, it's a six inch and then this is sort of combining to make the vocals. When you go with a three way, that's your focus point is how good that is. This can concern itself with low end. This can concern itself with sparkly highs. And this can do the bulk of the fucking actual frame of what you're listening to. So these sound like $5,000 or more sit in an audio file set up in China, like the fucking finish with the wood and everything. They're, they're, they're basically what I thought would be perfect speakers. They're warm and they're warm and soft yet still neutral enough that you wouldn't complain. There's no bass and treble adjustment on them. There's just there's an optical in, and you, I would recommend highly you send a digital signal into it so it uses its own DAX. There's actually both of the units have instead of like like a powered studio monitor that have the amplifiers on each side. A lot of the other ones like the Alara's there or. Um, Ones that are not, like, or the, the Canto Tux, those have amplifiers on one side and you send this, the wire to the other to power it. These have all the inputs on one side and then an analog signal that goes to the other speaker so it has another amplifier there. So you got to plug both speakers in then plug all your signal sources into one and then control it with the remote. And um, I would love to get these hooked up in my house again somewhere. I'm, I'm cons I don't know. I'm considering if I built, like, a temporary theater, but then again, they're self-powered... So it's like it makes I just I love these fucking speakers. They are they are the audiophile speaker. You put these up in a room, they're 1200 bucks. They sound like a $5000 set of audiophile. They look like it. They are built like it and they're monsters. And these are the version 1. The version 2, which has a less of a like they don't have an angle back and the box is more boring, is $1000. There's a Mark 2 of these that is cheaper. And then this is only a 6 and a half. There's a M5A. An M5A. You know what the M5A has? An 8. It's got this over an 8. We're going to get to another set of swans behind my home theater screen that um, has an 8. And I'll explain what I didn't like about those. But there's a reason. They're in use. So yeah, these are fucking beautiful. Like these have their, their place and they're an amazing passive speaker. These beat them. These are over. These beat them. Uh, beat. Probably on par beats everything else just these 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 are winners um we got one other set of speakers we got to come over here hi oof that one may not end up on the review and thing these are emotiva xpa threes hi emotiva we talked about emotiva for for those 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 uh self-powered monsters this is an original set of emotivas that i bought with my money on sale for $250 before I had a job, before I had any money at all, before I even had like more than two sets of headphones, I bought these in a, in a sale. And my brother actually bought the towers because he actually had a job and he spent $400 on the towers. They were on crazy sale. And I used them and I used to love them. They're a little soft dome with a little fucking surround around it. So cute. Look at that. And they're a six and a half and they're front ported. And Having listened to them since I bought them, like since I become Zeus, I hate the way these sound. They are so harsh for a soft dome. I don't know how they do it. I would relegate these to like rear channel use if I ever use them again. They were not good. But at the time, I was never more proud of a speaker. I own these. I own this speaker. Hope you guys can see, by the way, because there's an ND filter in here. It's rather dark. But yeah, no, this... This head, this headphone, this speaker was this pair of speakers. I got them both over here because I'm making up for a, a geometry issue. But yeah, this pair of speakers was something that I was like, wow, I own a real speaker, like a real adult, and I can't listen to them now. They just they're they're so sharp. They're like, oh my god, sharp. They were definitely not. That was Emotiva doing shit before Emotiva knew what they were doing with shit. So I think oh. Excuse me, half naked anime girl. If we're doing every speaker, we gotta pull these down. I actually just opened this up recently on a live stream. Today, mini rig minis. This is my red and blue mini rig minis. They're sitting in this little case with an entire subwoofer. Of course, there's a mini rig subwoofer in here. I forget what this case is for. Brainwaves, NVX. Anyway, that's that's where these are in case you're wanting to borrow them from me. 
So if I ever go out and I need, if I were going on vacation, I would obviously leave the subwoofer because that just makes it huge. And then here is a thing that actually someone commented on a video recently. It's like, hey, I own a Z boombox. Back in the day, when I was still trying to make money on the internet, because everyone does that, um, it was my brilliant and still brilliant idea to make a boombox. And here it is. And it uses Mica RB42s, or MB42s, I'm sorry, MB42s. And it still has a battery pack in it. That's still charged and, char and lights up the fucking SMSL SA36A. All this is cutting board, cutting board here, cutting board here, cutting board here, covered in carbon fiber wrap. And the, the sexy part about this was the speakers were detachable. And I actually had the ability to I bought these like plug extenders and then I cut off the ends so that you could actually uh, wire them up to the speakers. So you could put this down on a table and then spread the speakers out. And then I just took a three and a half millimeter input and there's your charging thing for the thing if you wanted to power it externally. Oh my God. And the handle and you would take this, I took this thing to the beach and shit and you would just bring it somewhere and plop this son of a bitch down. Can I do this where there's enough light to do this? Get out of my way, fucking stupid stealths so you'd put it like to one side and you you there was just velcro holding this and you go like this and you would just put this down and there you had you can go twice as far out and you'd have just a fucking volume knob here a vertically mounted amplifier and it still turns on if i had a source give me a second do you still turn on Ooh. Wait, why would I turn that on? Why would I go with the harder thing, the harder option? Let's turn on the big source. Let's put on a FIO. Went from this FIO to this FIO. So yeah, you would, I, I don't know, I've never, I haven't turned this thing on in fucking years. We're in this together. So here's our single ended output. Everyone should be using an M11 Pro for this. Okay, yeah, good, beautiful. Anime titties, it says meat. Uh, our volume is there, we'll put the volume up. Pink Floyd. Play, play, flipping the switch. Stand, stand still, laddie. So yeah, there is, um, the Z boombox still fucking rocks it. I guarantee you this sounds better than most portable audio solutions you'll ever find. God, these speakers still sound good. And I was gonna build digital cable test. That probably can be played, hold on. I think that's the battery stuttering. I should probably charge that. That is amazing. All right, I'm gonna shut this down. Shut down. Because I need to review with that and I don't want the battery to die. Yeah, so that's that was my idea and I want to rebuild it. You can see it was a simple design. Cutting board with some holes, some felt feet to line it up. The retra retractable wires were just simply shit I bought. It would clip in place to hold it locked to the vertical. The vertical just had the battery and the amp and then there was a cover for all the wire shit. If anyone wants to go into business with me making that, please. Micah, I would love to do it with the RB42s. We've got to, we've got to talk more. more. We've got to talk some more. We covered that. These three. These three are important. Not those three. Not these two. These three. Canto Tux. Uh, arguably the prettiest imaginary speaker that ever existed. Like, look at it. Like, does it even look real now? Like, I'm touching it, but it doesn't look real. Because it's a matte white, self-powered AMT that's black with a reverse surround solid silver driver that's in this, just the fucking sex case of it. I wonder where the remote control is. It's got to be behind it or in the box. 
So those were a self-powered speaker. I don't have a set of Vanity T1 Encores here. I, I sold them to my friend. Chris, I, I didn't have a use for them. And my friend was like, look, man, I got a new house. I need need speakers. I just need speakers. I, need, I want those. I've heard the Vanity Encores. Look up the T1Es, the Vanitus, V-A-N-T-O-O. -O. Look up the Vanitus. Those are amazing speakers. I wish I still had a set, but I just needed the money and I sold them. These were the competition to that. They were certainly prettier by a long shot, not as technically um, proficient. They didn't have as good a DSP correction or anything, but they still were like $700 and sounded like they were worth it. These had a sub out. These could reverse the left and right without going through a fucking maze of options to do it. They're sexy ass speakers and people still have them to this moment on their wish lists. There's, and that's it. That's, they're just beautiful. And I, I, I waited so long to get these. Actually, I think I got these from Funnel Audio also because they owed me a set and they say promised and I was like, here they are. Um, Mica RB42s. From the moment they were released to the second I heard them, these are still the best buy in audio. We can look at the back of the Yamos, which I talked about 40 minutes ago, but the Mica RB42s are a brick, a little four and a quarter, little four inch, a little, little tiny little four inch with a really thick surround. Daddy, why is that surround so thick? I don't know. With this little unsuspecting, like five and an eighth inch tweeter, this weird shape in this box that is like rounded edges and this little tiny port that's like a thumb hole on a bowling ball and full size binding posts. And it's like, all right, this is kind of cool. These are kind of cool. I bet they sound all right. I bet they sound all right. They don't sound all right. Um, when we brought this set, and was it this set? We might have brought this set to RMAF in 2018. When we did RMAF in 2018, we had them set up on individualized Emotiva monoblocks, on, like up on stands, monoblocks, and a DAC controlling it. And we sat people down. They were on their side. I like to run them on their side with the tweeters in. We sat people down, and this is RMAF. So people are like expecting shit to be expensive. We didn't tell them on the price. We said, how much do you think these are worth? We took a, we took a survey. The average cost of the RMAF viewer who was listening to $150, I think they're now $170, RB42s, granted they were on monoblocks and it was all set up pretty, was $1,500. All these little things, oh my God, they sound so big, they sound so boomy, there's so much bass. Where the fuck is the bass coming from? Ah, they wanted, to spend, they wanted to spend 10 times more on this setup for just the speakers. Not for the whole thing, for just the speakers. So I don't have to pimp these anymore. If I did another boombox, another Z boombox, it would be with RB42s. The only problem with RB42s is you can't just like nonchalantly power them with like a little battery powered amp. Like, ah, no, these need 50 fuck you watts minimum, 100 watts if you want to be good and 150 watts if you want to be perfect. The more power, the merrier. And it's because when you have a smaller driver that needs to excurge more, excursion, I'm assuming the, the action of excursion is excurge. When you need it to move more air to get to the volumes you want, and you really need to wake these up with power, you need more power. And it needs like 80 watts just to fucking shove that driver in and out as fast as possible. These are probably the best speakers that exist. Price to performance, period. Price to performance, the, still RB42s, which is another, if you're watching this and you're one of those people who's like, Zeos, you don't do any of the cheap things anymore. I found the best things. It's over, Johnny. We got five, 10 years before the fucking cycle all repeats and this thing goes away and a new thing comes out. These are still the best thing. They haven't not been the best thing. They're the best thing. Buy them. They're the best thing. Just know you need to power them. On another like little baby tiny note, look at this little thing, a little crappy looking computer speaker from the 2000s. These are the iLoud micro monitors and they're $300 a set for the pair. And they come with a big ass transformer and wire that goes between. Look at these nice options, flat EQs, volume, and they speak on off. Ooh, um, these are absolutely worth $300 a set. I bought this set for $200 a set. As you can see, these also came to RMF under iLoud. And you just QR code that and it would bring you to the post on hi-fi guides and these uh, are what made me buy the mtms which you're going to see on my desk upstairs which are 700 dollars for the pair and also very small yeah these things are hilariously good like do they compete with the rb42 yeah if they get close they're not really going to beat it nothing beats the rb42 nothing beats the rb42 but for a self-powered bluetooth capable 
you know, actual fucking powered amp that has a little clip indicator that's the light. These things are absurd. I couldn't, I actually, what's the voltage on this? Is that a DC in? I gotta see what the voltage is. Cause that would make it the even easiest, uh, 24 volt. If I had a 24 volt battery, I can just make this my boom box. And they'd be Bluetooth already. The only problem is the wire that goes between them is a fucking chonker. Like, what the fuck is this? What is this, iLoud? It's bigger than my fucking... I don't have a vacuum with a cord this big. So I'd have to rebuild this to make it less fucking stupid. But yeah, no. iLoud micro monitors. Once you hear them, you're a believer. If you look at them and you go, oh no, there's a little crappy computer speakers like every fucking Dell came with in the 80s. No, they're not. Way better than that. Way, way better than that. The fact that they're called iLoud kind of makes it fucking ruinous. Um, have we covered all the speakers here? We have. It's time to move. Actually, no. We're not going very far. We're coming right here. The most used speakers in my house on this review desk. Fluid. Uh, FX80s? you the FX80s, right? Coaxial, soft dome, 8 inch. Front slot, $400. We talked about the Atom T5Es. One of the reasons I wouldn't recommend the Atom T5Es to just everybody anymore is because these fuckers exist. They're bigger, they're louder, they're bolder, they get lower. The tweeter, it, it is a coaxial, so you get that amazing effect of it not like moving, like it's just fixed in one spot. This has been my test rig behind the desk for a year, it's eight months, at least, at least six to eight months. This has been the only speaker that if I'm testing the, the, the output on a fucking DAC, that's what I'm testing with. I fucking love these. And I love them more because they're so cheap. An eight inch self-powered for $200 a pop. Fuck yeah, homie. You go out and you buy a surround sound processor, like a seven channel or a five channel surround sound processor, center channel, left channel, right channel, sound channel, back channel, fucking you just get a bunch of these for $200 and you put them around your fucking space and you're good forever. I love, and they look fucking good to me. As far as I'm, like this fluid logo is rubberized. It's like a keychain rubber. It just, and they're not super deep. They are fat boys. Like you can't get over the fact that they thick. I tried to put them on the shelf with a clip jar, they wouldn't fit. I don't think I had the space to move everything over to get them in there. But honestly, I'm probably gonna use them and not just put them on a shelf. Everything on the shelf there is on a shelf because it's on a shelf. It's there to be background fodder. I feel like these are cheap enough and good enough that I wanna constantly pull them out. There's another set of speakers that does that. Wait, where'd I put my uh, water bottle? I'll try to spill it over everything. Um, we're gonna take a walk into the darkness, which you probably won't be able to see anything. A wave of my hand and then I gotta uncover this thing I keep this covered for what it's movie night ah, there we go. I'll have to bring one to the light hold on excuse the colors being off if the colors are off Ugh! we're talking about $400 sets of powered monitors hey what's that Zeos is that a Mackie MR624 yes it is um, viewer these speakers um, hold a very important spot in my heart because this is like the first Mackie setup that I got and I didn't want to touch the five inch, I didn't want to touch the eight inch, I didn't want to touch six inch. And these are the best quiet speakers you've ever, ever listened to. Very stiff surround. We're going to talk about stiff surrounds. Very stiff. Look at the size of that waveguide. That is not quite JBL size, but that's, that's clip size with a soft dome in it. These are self-powered monitors and I believe they DSP correct that when you play them at a low volume and they know how much they're moving, they adjust. So they have like a loudness setting automatically because these speakers sound the best, the lower you play them. You can play them loud and they sound perfectly fine. In fact, I was using these when I first moved to the house. I set the Yamas up over there and listen to those. When I put my, my TV in the sunroom, these were the speakers that I put in the sunroom on speaker stands to watch TV. Cause I'm like, this is great. Cause I want to watch TV quietly. I want speakers that can perform really well at night at in the quiet. Then I realized I'm in my house by myself and I need to go quiet. Now there's fucking Fortes up there. But whew, these speakers have earned every bit of the right to stay in my heart and on the, in my, I would put them in the desk. But again, these like the fluids, I'd rather use them than look at them. They're not exactly the most beautiful things. They've got this weird like design going for them. 
but uh, with the green light, the green power LED, they're over here because I use them somewhere else. Somewhere over here. So yeah, those are there. Now we come over here and I guess we'll, we'll touch these boys first, which are currently being used to hold up a collection of anime noodle stoppers. I hope you can enjoy the view. Um, these are the Bucart uh, S400 Mark twos. Hold on. They look a little, they look a little deeper. Where are the S400 Mark ones? Huh. I have two sets of those. There's the Mark ones and the Mark twos. And Mark two. All right. These are the Mark twos. These are the newer ones. Did I sell the Mark ones? Where the fuck are my Mark ones? Did I put the Mark ones in the Mark II box and put them away? I don't actually know. I've lost an entire set of boot carts. Um, these are the rears. So just like the little S200s, we've got a passive radiator in a weird pill shape to give the most surface area. And around the other side, we have got, and it's gonna be real fucking dark. And you're probably not gonna, let me just double check to see how bad this is in case I need to go do things. Screw, oh my God, it's so dark, so dark. so dark on that 9% of this battery too. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop the recording since I won't be back at my well-lit review desk. I'm going to stop the recording. I'm going to brighten this up and then we'll look at those and whatever else is around here. All right, I've managed to get the battery up to 50% wallpaper available on the hoard only because there's, she's not wearing any underwear and those are sheer. It's like, wow, how did I even put that in the thing? That's one of those wallpapers I put in there in case I felt like getting kicked off of YouTube, which obviously I still do, but I'm just not gonna link it in the imager. It'll just be, you have to go through a hole. You gotta jump through so many hoops. So I actually found the other boot carts, but we'll get to those in a second. Now that I've lightened it up, hopefully I can combine these together without it being a fucking issue, put the high thing and everything. Um, boot cart S400. So the 300s and 200s we saw. S400s have that magic ability though. Oh, you fucking cunt. I'm sorry, did I scream that out really loud? Good, because <laughs> this is the ND lens that is designed to like, I did drop the GoPro on the floor. Oh God, did it just bounce? Uh, uh, the ND filter. Did it go back on? Probably got hair and shit stuck to it. All right, we're going to, we're gonna make the assumption that that's gonna stay on now. I'm not removing this in the thing because that's that's fucking hilarious that the ND filter just fucking fell off. Thanks, camera butter. Camera butter, by the way. So um, I'm gonna have to do a better system. If it falls off again, that's $13. I'm gonna punch somebody. So that tweeter, which we can look at more on the Mark I upstairs, and this work in conjunction. In fact, just, just know that the Mark II is slightly more neutral sounding, which is odd. It's slightly more neutral sounding and bigger. It's a bigger physical box and it goes lower than the Mark I. We'll talk about the actual, what it does upstairs where there's more light and I'm not messing with the, the girls from Two Love Rue. So this pair of speakers, on those beautiful speaker stands, by the way, uh, moving around, I'm not gonna do every subwoofer, am I? No. Um, you're not speakers. Okay, so guess we'll just get these out of the way. I own everything from the JBL Studio 500 line except for the sub. These are the Studio 590s and they are fucking gargantuan. And it's like, you look at the front and it's like, oh, that's a big speaker. Those are two eights. And just like we talked about on the 530, I gotta fucking clean this. Giant needs to be anime sticker bombed um, horns, actually with some cotton stuffed in there because just they're, they're big horns. Let's put it that way. I like using these up close, just like those work really well near field. But I also, if you put them far away and you turn up the volume laser horn, but look at the depth of them. That's where the real, the fucking like, holy shit. Are these that big? These are exactly bigger than you, whatever you think they are. Increase the size, height and depth by like three or four inches in your head. And I got them for $900 a pair back at my old apartment. So keep in mind, I'm living in a little, little apartment. I think I had both apartments at that time. You know what? 
I don't know if I had both apartments at that time. I'll have to look it up. But I, I had to know because I had the 530s and the 570s I couldn't get. And the 580s were like, eh, but the five, I got the five. I went from 530s to 590s. And these were on my sim racing cockpit for the longest time. If you watch any of my old videos in my old house, I had this setup only with a 43 inch television and it was different. And then I had the fucking, those towers here. And it was specifically gonna be for my, I'm gonna sit in my, my seat, my steering wheel. I'm gonna hit the starter button, the ignition and the starter button on a 1967 Shelby Cobra. And I wanna believe it. And <laughs> I believed it. I believed it. Those four eights like within arm's length of each other, blah, 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 fucking amazing. In fact, if I don't make this racing setup spin or decide to use headphones like a big loser i'll probably put them back in that exact same role just put them back in the role in fact i thought about selling these for a long time because they they were so big and i had so little place to use them i was just going to sell them in the yard sale the boxes to these actually little trivia the original shipping boxes to these still exist they're in the attic of my old apartment because it was an actual crawl like a space a big space actually with like eight foot ceilings above my apartment like the walls continued up another three feet and then the pitch started. So I could have made a whole other apartment and kept like a family up there. But what I did was I opened it up and my cousin was willing to climb up there. I handed him the box, he laid them down. They're probably filled with rat feces or mouse poop, whatever. But the boxes for these 590s are at my old apartment in Arborth. So if you need a pair of boxes, just go there. It's like, it's in the public hallway. You'll be able to get it. Um, they don't take anything to drive. They're just a giant, super efficient set of speakers that they're almost, I don't want to say they're like Serwin Vega-like and that they're fun, but that's the sort of, they're not, they're not serious like, oh, I'm going to appreciate music with these fine, delicate, they are fucking theater speakers. They are whomping. They whomp. They, they we're going to talk about the RF7s. In fact, we should probably go to the RF7s next, but these whomp like a mofo. And I keep trying to think where I could use them more regularly. And I've actually, since I moved the couch here to this space, I moved the couch here to do the 7.1.6 7 the Atmos setup. And I didn't move it away. And I actually will come down here and just turn my TV on. Because that's the 15, that's the 50 inch TV from my living room at my old apartment. There's a fireplace from the living room at my old apartment. This is a couch from the living room at my old apartment. There's a day bed from the living room at my old apartment. These are the speakers and stands from the living room at my old apartment. I basically built my old apartment right here and there's even windows behind him it's great so that wallpaper hasn't been used yet that wallpaper will be in the AIO twin review i actually got shook off of there so now that we're done with the 590s 590s are a hoot if you're like hey i have a bar in like a garage and I, you can get these for like 850 dollars a pair when they're on sale they're getting rid of the 500 line buy them they're huge and stupid and um, they are amazing. Like they do the same depthy imaging thing that the 530s do, just a little more unkempt, if that makes sense. In fact, we're gonna talk about the 570s and 580s when I go upstairs to the mezzanine and we'll get into how those are probably the most kempt um, speakers in the lineup. These are, the 530s are amazing, then the 570s are better than the 530s and probably the best of the set. The 580s are more normalized, and the 590s are just straight fun. Um, these are the AIO twins, and that's the girl from uh, SSSSS Gridman, and uh, she's amazing. So these basically are tuned to sound exactly like the Alara slash LNO one As. The difference being, um, they still use a single speaker cable to go between it, so you're not DSP correcting the drivers individually. Something on a thousand dollar speaker, you kind of want. Um, Milam, uh, these have a different remote and do Wi-Fi. And uh, I haven't done the review of them yet, but I, I literally emailed uh, the guy, Frank, who I'm working with, because they're doing like a video sponsorship. They want to sponsor some videos, so there's money involved. And I'm telling him, look, these things have some issues. The sound is great. The problem is if I turn them off and then turn them back on again, they take like 45 seconds to realize they don't want to be on Wi-Fi, then I can switch them to whatever input I want. So as of right now, in this linen gray, which by the way, I think got, these got shook over. The linen grays, I like colors. The purple eggplant on the LN01As and these AIO twins, like the gray on this is like burgundy. I like that shit. Give me an option. Stop taking away colors. Black, black, like 
I, I literally have on my to-do list for Twitch, paint one of these studios, either the 590s or the 580s, the 5 paint them. There's so, you can get these in like a beautiful cherry in like Europe, but the front is still black. So what good is it if that's all you see and it's black and you go to this, oh yeah, it is cherry. So I wanna do like the whole thing up either white or maybe just red or sticker, but something, something to give me, it's got the shapes, the geographical, the, the fucking geom geometry is there, but not that. We'll get to those last. Um, I lied. Hi, I lied. This is a set of, uh, oh fuck, they're stuck together. This is at a studio of uh, Dayton B652s assembled. I know what the problem is with, <laughs> okay. So very, very short story. This, when I was making the Z boom box that we showed off, I made the our, uh, Mica MB42 ones, then I use MB42Xs, and then I'm like, you know what? I still got a bunch of these fucking uh, Dayton B652s and B652 Airs. I'll make a bigger one that uses these. And I built one and I, I, I went to sell it, and the guy's like, look, I already have the speakers. Just sell me the actual unit f flat packed, and you keep the speakers. So this set didn't have the, the speakers that came off, like the micas. I double stick taped, like that crazy thick 3M double stick tape. I double stick taped them to the unit, so I had to peel it all off the plastic, which luckily happened. And then, I don't know why I did this, but I uh, put the double stick taped speakers on top of each other. In fact, here's a double stick tape. I put them on top of each other. So they're 3M double stick tape to each other into a, a log of, of speaker. They're a speaker log now. So I have them. I could probably break it over my knee and get it to split, but it's going to destroy the speakers. Not like it matters. Anyway, so there is an actual original unfucked, mostly unfucked set of RB, uh, Dayton B652s. Hi, how you doing? Moving around. Klipsch RF7 Mark Threes. So, Klipsch sends these to me. They're $3,600 a pair. They're 114 pounds each. They are the top of their line in their RF series. Like this is before we get to the like like the the Forte and the Heresy like that Heritage series. This is their home theater line, and they are murderers. They are. The only speaker that I considered putting in my home theater besides the Heresies. I've done so much work to the Heresies. We'll talk about it when I get there. I can't believe this video is going to be longer in, in, than the headphone video. I didn't think that was possible. But you people are here for the journey. And I'm here to tell you the stories of all my speakers. So these show up. My friend's obsessed. I try to use them upstairs in the great room. The great room is just fucking echo. Death echo. All day. Um, I actually had, a, had one of the terminals reversed when they put the panels together. I'll tell you, no, they're made in Alabama. It's Alabama. Where does it say? Uh, Hope, Arkansas. Arkansas. Hope, Arkansas. It's one of those. It's one with an A. That's down there. It's an A state. And they actually wired the terminals backwards, so I was plugging it in, and it was grounding out, and I was like, no, oh, no, bad. So I fixed that, and of course they are. They perform like you'd. Ex they perform exactly like you'd expect. See, this has two eights. Pussy bitch. Two tens. Not only does it have two tens. But whereas the 590 has two ports that are approximately that deep and go into the same void, this has two ports that are very deep, go that deep, and then there's a separation. So it's actually, they're not sharing a space. That 10 inch below, its own subwoofer. That 10 inch above, its own subwoofer. And the horn obviously doesn't get affected by any of that. Um, the only problem I have with something like this is it, it's a very similar problem to like these tower speakers, any tower speakers. The same reason that I fucking jerked off so hard about the, the Swan M3As is because they're three-way. What, like I said, do you have a, a, tw a treble tweeter that's like, oh, only the highs, oh, only the bass and the mid range covers, you know, everything else. So it gives you a nice, sweet, balanced sound. So the problem with towers like this and this is that you're getting like if you if i'm speaking to you and you're hearing my voice you have to decide how much of my voice is coming out of a giant fuck off horn or giant fuck off eight inch and ten inch speakers so there's very little coherence like if you just have this as a speaker that's highs and that's lows 
where's the mid-range? It kind of has to squeeze it out of both and, and hope it blends together. Um, which means I usually, for like listening to someone singing music like that, I'm not super sold at either one of these giant speakers. There's just something called too big. This would be fine if there was another driver, a mid-range driver to, to sort of like level it out. But the way they are currently, these are entertainment speakers. You put them on and it's like, fuck, wall of sound. Can't beat two tens or two eights. Except those are my favorite tower speakers. Let's come over here. First thing we'll do is we'll spin the, uh, we'll gently spin the girls because they are t prone to fall over at the least fucking expected time. Can't wait to have this automatically spin with some sort of magic that Dan and I are going to work on. Anyway, these are the cheapest tower speakers. Well, oh God. These are the cheapest triangle tower speakers that are the top of the... All right, so there's multiple tiers of triangle speakers. These are the Borea line, which is the cheapest. There's higher lines above that. But of the Borea line, this is the most expensive of that line because it has three drivers, then a fourth driver, then a tweeter. And you're like, well, Zios, why is this better? Why is this the best tower speaker you've ever heard? And I fucking stand by that. Because there is a port in the front right there, that port, that only involves these three six and a halves. This is in a sealed box here. Well, the tweeter doesn't matter. This is a sealed six and a half with a fake um, face plug. And what that means is this is just a speaker that would probably lack low end because it's in a sealed box and sealed speakers tend to not have enough low end. It just happens to be sitting on that, a triple six and a half inch subwoofer slash mid bass. So you get your vocal, here's your mid range. Here's, here's the good shit. This is where the vocals come out of. You get your, your nice highs out of a nice soft dome with a rubber surround. You get the rest of your creamy mid range going down to like the bass section and then this takes over. It's a three way and it's a three way. And that's why it sounds so fucking good because instead of it like, oh yeah, vocals are coming out of here and here. Now vocals are coming out of, yeah, they might reach down that low maybe and they'll definitely get up into the treble, but there's your meat. That's what makes this better. And it isn't that impressive a tweeter compared to like fucking that. But holy shit, it balances out. I would love to get the next the next model up of this, the other line up, has the extremely deep metal uh, triangle tweeter, not just on the front, but also on the back. And it gives you the multiple terminals so you can do bi-amping and shit. So um, it, it'll actually fire treble out the front and out the back so it hits the rear wall and bounces forward and it's time aligned and it's, ah. Oh, I can't even fucking fathom it. I can't even fucking fathom it. Dynamo 400 subwoofer, by the way. Okay. Um, this speaker exists twice in the house, so I'll talk about it here or upstairs. This is the JBL Studio 520C Center. Not kneel on that wire. Oh, don't fall over either. And it's it's actually got the smallest drivers of the whole series. Those are only four inch instead of the five and a quarter that like the 530 have. Um and it's this whole thing is a horn up to like about here you could see where the horn lines up the smooth edges here and it's the best center channel i've ever heard it's not the loudest it's not the most detailed it's the most natural sounding and no matter how much i spend on front channels if i need a center channel and i need to just quickly put one on there it is it's not super deep it's got the port little drivers and it just speaks and it speaks super clearly and that is also what's on my centered my uh, rolling tv cart which actually my mono solution which i kind of wanted to make it sound like my final solution that was like the joke that was the, that was a joke it's very uh, uh, a very not good joke but i made it anyway i called it the mono solution and um yeah it's what keeps all the echo down on my upstairs is that i'm using one speaker uh the last speakers here which a lot of speakers have gone missing and you'll see why but the last speakers down here are, again, swans. These are the best speakers I have in the house. And I'd like to say that with full confidence, but the Bucart A500s are over there. We have to go look at those. And those are $5,000, $4,500. And I think these compete directly with those. And these were $900. I think they're now 1000 Actually, on Swan, I think, on swanspeakers.com, 
think these are 900 still. These speakers are fucking dumb. And I have put them back on the Doom stacks, which are on top of Martin Logan Dynamo 300s, and they're self-powered, and they're three-way, and I don't see anything beating them ever, like in a long, like a long ways. If you put these on, and you, you, you just step back, everyone's like, where's the subwoofer? Because they throw that much low end. And it's only a six, it's the same design um, of a three-way, only instead of a soft dome, we've now got a small, a dynamic driver there. Six and a half, which doesn't look that impressive. This driving surround is real stiff on this one. And that's using a special flat panel tweeter that isn't a folded AMT, that is a flat surface behind there, almost like an electrostat, but not an electrostat. And self-powered, three-way, six-way. You actually have a wire that goes from this side to that side with like eight pins on it. So that each individual driver is DSP corrected. And then if you watch my review of this, you know that there's a secret to unlocking the amazing. Like if you plug it in, it sounds super neutral. It's like, wow. You turn up the bass and treble knobs on these speakers and they don't have more bass or more treble. It like reveals detail. It like enhances detail. It doesn't get more. It like turns them to a point where I'm like, oh, now I'm going to have immediate uh, raw, rough sex with your porthole because I can't, I've never heard bass and treble knobs change something, not just more of it, but better quality of it. But these do. Um, yeah, these are, if these come back in stock on like Amazon, I'm going to link the shit out of them. You can get them on Swan speakers, go get them, link the shit out of them. You, oh, if I want to do a home theater Zeos, but I don't have a thousand dollar budget, buy these instead. Fiber optics for your television, you get a nice little metal remote. Wherever fuck that metal remote is. Good. Actually, the metal remote's under there. They're dumb. They're the dumbest, most depthy, most low endy. I think they're beautiful. I think that fucking wood shape. What? Oh, God, the dust. You know, I've had something up when the dust settles. They're the best speakers in the house. The only ones that can be, the only speakers, the only speakers that can come close are the Bucart A500s. And we're going to go look at those right now. We're good in here, we're good. Fluid sub. Eh, it's all right. We're good over there. No speakers. We'll get we'll get to this. We'll get to the whole home theater because that's a whole place we gotta be. I don't know why, but I put the A500s over here. Sitting on some really uh quite shitty sonic fiber stands that look like they're for commercial use. These are the Bucart A500, top of the line for their speakers in oak. And the speakers are $4,000 or no, slightly under $4,000. This control box, which you have to use, have to use, well, you don't have to use it because you can run it like that, but that's another $1,200 and it's shitty plastic and the doors break off of it. So looks very similar, like remarkably similar to the A to the S400, which is the, the passive one. Only they had to move the tweeter to the top. I like the tweeter on the bottom. That is the default use of it. Um, they had to move the tweeter to the top, put this down where I'm not going to lose them. And instead of that long passive driver in the back, you have another six and a half that's active. That is an active driver. And here's your control. And it's got an XLR input and it's got on and off and it's got this wireless WISA button and et cetera. And the benefit and beauty of these speakers is that they've taken D like the DSP controlling on those swans. I just looked at the M3, M300 Mark IIs is... They sound great. You plug them in, they're done. They sound they sound great. These, <clears throat> these, you can load different profiles because since it can control the front and rear six and a half separately, it could choose to amplify them at the same time or not at all, or just hold it still or change how much, if it's going to go on a near wall, you could, you could load different profiles. It changes the entire shape of the speaker. And I haven't even tried the newest of the master tunings. I'm going to have to, now the A700s are coming, the big daddies of these, the tower versions of these. I'm expecting those to be the greatest speakers I've ever heard, by the way. Hands down. They're like $7,000 for the set. And Maz Bucard has been like, hey, I'm going to send these to you now. It's been like two years. I'm like, oh, thank God. So when those show up, I'm just expecting them to be the best. If they're not, then so be it. But this uses the same, again, I'll talk about it when I get up to the upstairs, the same mechanicals of the front. The drivers are almost, I think they're exactly the same. Very soft, very easy to move drivers that can control. 
and then the tweeter with the with the with the special spread, and they just do everything in digital signal correction. And you could even do room correction, but you have to use like an iPhone. You can like wander around with an iPhone to hear the echoes. It's very strange. Did it once. Didn't like the way it, sa- it sounded. My friend had his iPhone here. Comes with a remote that lights up. Hey, look, the remote still light up. I haven't used this thing in months. It's another speaker that's like, why are you in my basement in this corner? I moved it here because I felt like I was I interact with my basement everywhere but here. I don't come over here. I get a wire, I leave. These are so expensive and so different that I just didn't want to be near them. And maybe I didn't even want to look at them and reference them. I just want to forget them. I put them in the fucking sad, the bad boy corner. You're bad. You bad boys. You made me re- reconsider everything I've ever learned about speakers. You're bad. And then the uh, Mark 300 Swans came out of the fucking Mark 300 Mark Mark II Swans came out and was like, oh shit, that. So uh, if you can afford forty five hundred dollars for those, they'll do anything you want and everything you want, or save you know three grand thirty five hundred dollars and buy the Swans if they're available. Um, I think it's home theater time. We'll start with the rears. We'll start with the very rears, the very backs. There's nothing else down here, right? There's nothing. Over there. Okay, no. So th- we're about to go on a fucking swan fest. I hope you're ready for some swans, bro, because swans are coming. M200 Wi-Fi's? I think that's your model number. Um, I reviewed these, and I gave them a decent review. They're smaller than the original M200s I got. They have Wi-Fi connectivity, so you can find them on your on your apps. Like it'll show up in your Tidal or Spotify as an actual Wi-Fi device. They have co They've got the digital inputs. They got a remote control. They're self-powered on one side. It's a very standard speaker. I found that these, in particular, only really worked loudly. You couldn't use them on a desk. That was like the one negative. They had this big metal tweeter behind a fucking grill that's behind another grill. And if you tried to use a near field, it was like too much. It was too intense. So that's perfect because now they're the back channels of my home theater. Because my home theater, real quick, if you don't know, my home theater isn't normal. There is no surround sound receiver here. There's not even a surround sound processor here. There's literally a mini DSP DD RC88D that's feeding out four coaxial digital stereo sets. So one set is going here. This this RCA cable comes out and goes in here and it's like, this is the left and right back channels. So the DACs inside these are being used to shoot sound forward for the back channels. Now my setup here is on paper a 7.1. There happens to be 11, spe- no, 10 speakers. Ten. There's ten speakers in a 7.1 configuration. So those are the backs. Those are the little Swan M200 Wi-Fi's. The gap over there that I filled with the Klipsch RP150Ms, that was because I had a set of these M300 Mark Ones. The, the best speakers in my house that I say for price, performance, everything is, a, is the Mark Mark II M300s, the three ways. These are a two-way. M300, the older revision, and they were amazing when I reviewed them. In fact, they were so amazing, I tried to bring a set to RMAF. And the problem was, um, I sent a set down to Tennessee to DMS. He took them with him. He drove down with his uh, loaded in his van. He set my set down. He said they arrived, but they sounded damaged. Something was wrong. They were they were doing an out of phase thing. He didn't like it. I'm like, that's got to be something wrong. Hold on. We have a couple days before we go to RMAF, where he was driving from Tennessee to RMAF. In Colorado, I will order another set on, on Amazon. I hit order button, order, order, order button. Or I, want, I gotta get these speakers. I gotta have swans. I'm doing an RMAF room. I gotta have swans. I love swans. This is before the um, M3As, I think. Or maybe the M3As are just too heavy. I forget what the reason was for wanting to do these instead of those. It might've been just timing. But I order it and it goes to arrive at his house and he left the day before. So now he, I said, bring the broken set. Worst case scenario. Uh, we'll just not use them. So he had the brand new set arrive at his house when he wasn't there. Someone brought it inside. We brought the other set to RMAF. We plugged them in. They sounded fine. The shaking from the drive from Tennessee to Colorado, whatever it did, it fixed it. So we ran them in RMAF. Everyone loved them in RMAF. Come back. Now I have the option to return that $500 set. These are $500 a piece. I bought them both. This is when Swan wasn't talking to me. I got a $500 set of speakers and a $500 set. The other one's over there, by the way. These are both the powered sides. These are the sides that have the uh, coaxial digital cable. Again, 
And then this goes out and I made a custom extension that goes all the way outside the basement for that to be the left side speaker and there's a right side speaker. Now I'm doing something weird here. I have such a big space. I didn't want to have just one side speaker. I wanted to have two side speakers. So these speakers play the exact same signal in my surround sound. They're precisely measured to be equidistant from the center where you're sitting. So that the sound doesn't come from just here or here. The sound comes from both places at once and you sort of lose it. So I had two sets. I had the original set and the set that I bought and I whipped them both out and I hung them both up from the ceiling and said, you're my side channels now. So there's actually a splitter over there that converts how did I do this? Oh, I converted from coaxial digital, which is what the unit uses, to a splitter that does fiber optic and coaxial digital. One coaxial digital continued to a speaker. The other one went to a, conver a um, converter to then convert from fiber optic back to coaxial digital to be on both of these speakers. It's a thing. It's a whole thing. But anyway, so I have two pairs of these. The other two are over there. And now we have to lift the screen up. Well, we don't really have to lift the screen up until I talk about those, but we're gonna lift the screen up regardless because it's been a while since I've done this. So the way this works is you lift, and it's, it's get kind of heavy, and you gotta like crab walk over while holding it. And I have these spring-loaded pieces of rope, and they go up and you reach through the gap in the ceiling, and you got a rope and a hook. And you walk back over here like you're, like you're standing on your hands, and then you got a hook and a rope, and boom. So that's holding the PVC screen. If you ever want to build a 150 inch screen, PVC pipe, 3D printed parts, some aluminum um, corners to make it nice and straight, and spandex. I, I actually didn't calculate what the cost of the screen was. It wasn't a lot. This, the aluminum was the most expensive part. The aluminum the PVC pipe is nothing. A spandex was like $90 for, for black and ivory. And then a bunch of these little clips, like a hundred of these little fucking clips to go around it. Anyway, welcome to behind my screen, which I, let me just double check the camera is filming it properly. Oh my God, what is that? Number one, I'm at 4% battery, so that's not enough. And also it's doing a weird, what is that weird blue line shit? Let me try to fix that. All right, well, the ISO has to be so high that it's causing that like dancing and I had to put up even higher. So hopefully you'll be able to see it. I'm holding the camera off my head just to see how bad it gets, even though that's like the only, I guess I could double the amount of light going this way. If I do that, does that help? That might help a bit. All right, re re reapplying the camera to forehead. So, welcome to behind my projection screen. We'll start left and right. This is a Klipsch Heresy 4. Four? You're the four, right? Heresy 3? No, Heresy 4. 12 inch, then a mid-range horn, and then a tweeter horn. So double horned and a 12 inch. These speakers have no low end. They're designed to be on the floor. They're designed for old school vinyl setups. They're designed for people who just like sit around and like listen to music at very low volumes. That ain't me, but I fell in love with the horns. Those Klipsch horns, unlike the RF7 with that giant one or the JBLs with that giant one, these are two very specific projecting horns and horns, interspecies reviewers, and horns make all the difference a lot of the time. So the fact that I have a 12 inch here means that I can have that 12 inch, you know how we were talking about mid-range before and how like, oh, a two-way speaker, you really want that third driver that does the real, you know, the, the guts of the speaking and everything. So now take that, look at this and go, well, that's a three-way, there's three drivers. No, no, you're wrong, you're a fool. Stop being a fool. That highs is very high. That horn is also pretty much high mid-range, nearly treble. This doesn't do low end. That does low end. Those um, infinity subs are 10 inch with two passive side firing 10 inch. I made those as a whole fucking mess network back here, not mesh network, mess network of mini DSPs, mini DSP nano digis that are sending different signals that I've designed to this, to this, and to that. I've made this into a four way speaker. It's a three-way speaker on DSP where there's a subwoofer doing the low lows. There is these two horns which count as one channel that is doing the highs and trebles and, and upper mid-range. And then there's that 12 inch, that big fuck you 12 inch, which is bigger than the 10s on the Klipsch RF7s and bigger than the 8s and the JBL. There's a 12 inch driver that is the mid-range. 
So now imagine that. Imagine the statement I made. Well, oh, you need the, you know, the bass comes out of here, the treble comes out of here, and the mid-range where all the beautiful creamy vocals come out, obviously come out of the mid-range. There's my mid-range. It's a 12-inch fucking mid-range. Because it doesn't need the low end. It doesn't need to have do bass. It doesn't need to do to bass. Do do bass. This port is like it's there. It's fine. It's tuned. These never did good low end. So I removed the bass to that entirely. I control the horns. I think I had dropped them down five and a half decibels with the mini DSP. And when I moved it into this space, which is quite far to where you're listening to them, I actually increase it to, I think, negative three and a half. So it's still down three decibels. And then these are basically what I based everything off of. Those 12 inch drivers just produce whatever they can in the mid range they can. They just naturally fade out at low end and cut off at the highs. And whatever they make, I then corrected the horns and the subwoofer to take over the rest. These speakers are, mm, I wanna say murderous, but that's, that's not giving them enough credit. Murderers are very in, indelicate. These are serial killers. They plot and plan and produce sound that just comes out at you. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's Barry White. Hey baby, is, is two 12 inch just fucking wafting at you. These were the only things in my old home theater. In my old home theater in Narberth, uh, I only had, I didn't have center channels. I only had those. When I first moved my theater down here with the 104 inch screen over here, I only had those two speakers because I literally couldn't change what was perfect. They had a, a phantom center and I wasn't watching, I was watching alone. I had a little shitty couch and now the big, big uh, seats at the time. They're perfect. What I use them for music, absolutely. But here's the thing, they're now in a home theater, which, and the screen got slightly larger at 150 inch. It's 150 inch diagonal, but in Cinescope uh, 235 to one. So that means the speakers are so far apart that yes, I can get a center image and I do listen to them just stereo. But if you have someone sitting here, that's the only speaker they're gonna hear. They're not gonna hear that one. So you need to put a center channel. So of all the center channels that Zeos had options for, I have a triangle one upstairs we're gonna see in the end. I got that little, I got my little fucking JBL that I said, I love the center channel. I don't want any more center channels, more center channel than you need. What does Zeos use as a center channel? Well, if you've watched any of my videos on these, these are the big daddy version of the best speaker in the house. The M300 Mark II that I have over there set up on the Doom Stacks that I say is the greatest speaker for $900. Here is what happens when you make it bigger. And I mean, just, it just is physically like scaled up in fucking CAD and you make it an eight inch driver and you keep the same mid range and tweeter. So what they had to do here is DSP correct to have an eight inch, which is very much bigger and more powerful. And holy fuck, that surround is fucking tight but they kept the mid-range in treble. When I was using these to review them, I couldn't stand in front of them. This distance, this distance, which is pretty far away, is like unlistenable because you, you played them low and it was like, all right, they don't sound like they, they don't have enough bass. You're like, you need the power. There's, there's a certain range where if like the driver's doing this, it's not producing any low end. Everything's tuned to be at a certain range. And these are tuned to be at a range where if it's not fucking slamming in the air, they don't sound good. So I was using them in the review space, but I was four, it was 35 feet away. This basement's 55 feet across by 53 feet across. I was standing at this pole. This is how close to those speakers I could get where they were actually starting to sound good. It was like concert PA speakers. It was like, this is not good. I didn't, I don't recommend them. I, people have bought them, even though I specifically said, do not buy these. So of course, when it came to finding a center channel, which I argue still, if you want to put a center channel in your home theater, which you know most people do, they like they think they need it. You don't need it if your speakers are far enough together and you're only sitting there alone, maybe one or two people. You don't need a center channel. Get big left and rights and let them do a phantom center, and it'll be fine. Every every surround processor and receiver, you just center none, and then it'll just work. But since I was putting a center, you be fucking damned if Zeus wasn't putting this as his fucking center. So, what we've got here are Swan. M500 Mark 1s, because the 500s didn't exist to make a Mark 2. So we've got Swan M500 Mark 1s, which are 8 inch, and I've got them tilted up on 2x4s because they're slow slanted back, and I wanted to match the height with the clips because the seats are now raised. So they're tilted forward, so they're almost facing downward, and they're also towed into each other. And that's so that if you're sitting on the far 
uh, right uh, seat, that speaker is pointing at you more than that one. So the center image will not be biased to that one, it'll be over there. And as you move, then that one starts pointing at you more, so it'll be biased over here. So it's perfect. I had lots of, lots of listening to movies without having anything visually to do it because the screen was up. But um, those are fucking murderers. Serial, mur those are serial murderers, and these are just um, Alexander the Great. They're not a horn, but that's another thing, because since you put them up, these things have to scream. I don't know how these survive. You know how loudly I play my home theater? You, you, you must know, right? You have a fucking clue. These things are just the end of days loud. That's what they are. I put the loudest, most impressive speakers, not the best speakers. I would definitely take the 300s over these if you said I have one pair of speakers forever. Fuck these. Give me 300s. But... In the very, very specific scenario of, okay, Zeos, I want the loudest speakers possible because I need to listen to my music 125 feet away from my speakers, M500s. Which is why I'd love to review the big daddy of the M3As, the M5As, because it's another eight inch, but I feel like that line will have better audio phallic pro pro uh, properties versus like the M100, M series. Because this is fucking just dumb. These are dumb. Anyway, that's the end of the speakers down here. Uh, right, we did 10. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have, you can have two speakers as a center. You just have to, you know, do things to it. And then I've got six speakers around. So it's like swan, 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 clip, swan, swan, clip, swan, swan. So if you think I like swan, there you go. Um, I think we have to move now. I think the basement's done. Are we done in the basement? Oh, uh, I have to talk about these. So you may have seen these in my uh, review on my other channel of the, these are the Polk on wall monitor threes. I'll pull the cover off one. And I, these were one of those speakers that I reviewed way early in my career. They were like $120 for the pair. I bought a set a long time ago and they're a sealed plastic, multiple mount. Like you can see the holes to mount it. And there's a little thing you can put on to actually stand them up like this. And it's got a nice soft dome. And I don't usually like poke. In fact, most pokes I don't have, I don't have any pokes. These are the pokes. These have no low end at all because they're a sealed five inch, not a five and a quarter, five inch. But that tweeter is so sweet and it blends so nicely. If you don't need low end, this is like the upper 60% on like any of the, the Yamos. RB42s, th this can't compete with, the, with like the actual sharpness of the treble or the accuracy. But these were a nice speaker and they were flat as fuck so you could actually mount them to the wall if you needed a flat on-wall setup and you can get them in black or white. These were great. Add a sub and you had a full 2.1 setup going. I bought six of them because I'm going to put them outside, which are not outdoor rated speakers, but I'm America, man. I am America, not American. I'm America. And I know from putting the Kovo S, little micro cubes that micro made, in my old bathroom where I used to shower with the heater on and the steam going for an hour that those speakers worked for four or five years without issue. So if I can get a few hundred dollars worth of really nice Polk on one monitor threes and mount them out of my veranda in like the corner on the inside under the tucked roof. As long as but there's no there's no porch for bugs to grow into, which is another fucking big issue. But if these can survive out there for fucking eight years, I would have gotten my use out of them. And I can play them just quietly. That's the best part about it. That's why I have six. I could have put two speakers outside and blasted them. But the idea of sound reinforcement is that you put more quieter speakers so no matter where you are you could have a conversation you still hear the music but you're still quieter and quiet quietly speaking about the speakers oh this is lovely now so more speakers very delicate outdoors but they're not supposed to be there you go is that it have we finally touched on every speaker in the basement there's a sound bar here i don't want to talk about it oh i'm sorry there's at least one more speaker here here's a sound bar by the way by by zvox which i was like that's kind of cool here is a jbl uh, LSR 305, not a 305P, an LSR 305, the older one. And it sits up here on a shelf running and it is hooked up to the headphone out on my little micro computer here, the little Lenovo. And when I'm in Discord or Ventrilo, which is mostly Discord nowadays, or Discord or Ventrilo, that's where people speak out of. My friend, I sit there with a the little microphone and my friends talk out of a single point speaker 
which if you've never tried that, if you have friends that talk out of two speakers, unplug one of the speakers. Because having someone speak out of a single speaker is natural. People don't speak to you and come out of two speakers. That's not how it works. People come out of one, which is, I'm. Mean, this is why center channels are so fucking important and why mono can work for the solution I have upstairs. Um, am I good down here now? I think that's it. I'm, I'm 82% sure that that's it. I'm 119% sure that I've covered every speaker in the basement. God help us if I haven't. Anyway, moving upstairs. I hope this is working. Let me just double check the quality. Yeah, it's not bad. Beautiful sunny day, by the way. All right, so I'm gonna start with this one. It's a Bluetooth speaker. I wasn't gonna do a lot of them, but this one is the iLoud 40 watt boom box. And it sits here with my little round, you were the Echo Show 5, I think. Echo Show ball, I don't remember. But anyway, that's connected to that. And the reason that, that that's there is because I don't need much to fill this space with sound because of the Echo. And I think that's what taught me the lesson as to what to put on my vertical TV, which you've all probably seen my vertical TV, again, the mono solution video. Single JBL Studio 520C. That's it, that's the only speaker on this. My whole room, if I'm watching a podcast or listening to music, it comes out of there or it comes out of there. Single point speakers, because the echo, if you have two of the same sound, the delays that cause it to bounce and make, hi, the delays that cause it to bounce around in this fucking space are nightmarish. So I don't fucking bother. Single speakers are great. We'll go upstairs to the mezzanine after this. First, who remembers this? The human-centric little uh, tube uh, Bluetooth DAC amp with a waveguide. Go watch my review on this thing. This must look amazing with the ND4 filter on, which I have to check for dust because it fell on the fucking floor of my fucking basement, fuck. Anyway, these were bought sort of as a joke for pasta, but they actually turned out to be very good. And now here's another set of speakers that I bought with my own money, just like those, to see if they're any good. These are Bose. These are the Bose, what are they? Companion 2 Series 3. I owned a set of these Bose way back in the day, but the ones that I owned way back in the day were fucking great. And this looks like fucking shit. It's a single two inch, no tweeter, that the grill comes off. It didn't used to come off in the old one. It was metal, it had a front port. It was a front ported one. It was so much nicer built. This is like crap China with shit attached to it. I really, I, I think those are at my parents' house still or the cats peed them all to death. But I bought a set of those to review them, hoping it would be like a similar thing. It's like, oh, let's do a Bose product. He just has not a Bose product or whatever. I'll do a Bose, but didn't do it. Um, here are the Mark I Bucart S 400s. And I can finally talk about the drivers. These are shorter. Duller paint and also these are made in Denmark and the other ones are made in China Because Bucart started to get popular because Zeos got the first set and of course Zeos says you should buy these and everyone fucking buys them So the magic of the Bucarts, I can finally get to it, is that this specific Driver arrangement, which I hope you can see in the light This six and a half, the way they, they measure drivers is you don't just put a microphone here and you're done You measure a, a driver like this Measure, measure, measure. Every like degree or five degrees, they move it around while it's playing. And they measure the shape. They put a tone through, and where does that tone work? All right, it's too low here, it's out of phase here. Then it's good, it's good, it's perfect here. Perfect, a little bit peaky here. So they, they measure how the driver performs at 180 degree or 270 degree around the actual moving cone. So what Bucart did was the same thing with the measurement rig around the tweeter, and they designed this waveguide, which is gigantic, to mimic the exact same peaks and dips as the driver. So if the driver was negative three degrees, negative three decibels at this many degrees, they made sure the treble was two. And if it peaked a little bit right in the center, they made sure the treble did two. And so what you get from that is when you walk or move or turn the speakers, it's just a weird level of coherence that you don't get from other speakers. Like, do you think if you turn the JBL studios, you're gonna get the same level highs and mid-range throughout that whole thing with that fucking nightmare horn? No, it's not how it's gonna work. So this is the only speaker I know of that's specifically done that. I'm sure there's other that have, and I don't know about it. Horsies. 
But uh, yeah, also still contains the uh, the big vertical, well, really, really soft surrounds and all their stuff. It's amazing. Uh, so that's that, that's that. Nothing in the guest bedroom, because fuck those guests. They don't deserve it. I used to have the uh, M200 Swans in there, the ones that are on my back channels now. And uh, Goldie was like, I need these. And I'm like, you can't have them. Okay. So I did a video up here reviewing this Basex A700 amplifier because I was running out of, I didn't want to keep doing another like separate surround sound in my basement. I got this beautiful mezzanine. I never use it. I have no idea. Don't say pool table. Built a 7.1 surround sound up here. Yes, 0.1, because the subwoofer down there, the Klipsch, is actually wirelessly connected. These Q Acoustics 3030Is. So, these uh, don't come with the stands. You have to buy them separately. Look at the size of them. They are, like take the MB42, the RB42s, the Mica RB42s, blow them up 270%. Boom, cube acoustics. Let me kneel on my uh, punching bag. We've got a nice soft dome. Actually very similar to the soft dome on the Emotivas that I don't like. As far as like the little soft surround around the nipple. But it's uh, decoupled and it's a Q acoustics and there's your six and a half. And these speakers, aside from like the stands only working for them because they're bolted in, I don't think I'd sell them because they produce such a, a warm forward push. Like they're perfect vinyl speakers. If, you, if your vinyl setup has a little bit of like a harshness to it or anything in your life has a little bit of a harshness to it, you get the Q Acoustics. Because they do this thing where it's like, they sound almost like a horn, like a big, it's like a big wall of sound. By the way, it's green outside and I hate it because that means I have to cut the grass. They throw like a big wall of sound at you and it's so sweet and nice. And they're just pleasant speakers to listen to. And I'm so tired of speakers competing for the most detail, the most, just give me pleasant speakers to listen to. The Q Acoustics are that. They're that in spades. So thank you, Q Acoustics, for, for fucking existing. This is their best set. They're, they're, these were 469 for the speakers, and then they went up to 500. I think they're 500 now. But honestly, passive speakers for 500? Yes. Do it. Then the stands are another $200 if you want to go nuts. Um, laying down on the floor. Here. Do you know what this is? Who are you? Ugh. Hi. These are the JBL Studio 580s. Here are the 570s. Here, look. You ready? Do you recognize it now? Looks like a 530. And then there's an extra driver, and it's another eight inches taller. It's also up in a seat because if you put these down on the ground, like that's the height of a tower. Like just under nipple height is where I feel like a tower should be. These things are short. They kind of look comically small. We'll talk about the 570s in a second because I think they're the best of the bunch. Here are the 580s. Again, just take it in, in five, five, 590s, 580s, 570s. Take it in your 3D rendering program and just shrink and shrink again. That's legitimately how they did it. I do not believe that they actually re-engineered anything except for making the size different. So these have six and a halves. This is a normal size tower. The 590s are massive. These 580s are less massive and actually probably the most normal sounding. Like I think if you don't know which ones to get, you get the 580s because the 590s are huge and they have that thing where they're like, they're too much. And like, again, if someone's speaking to you, if you're using them for music, an eight inch driver is trying to do mid range and it really can't, it's, it's too big a thing to move with the sort of precision you need for vocals. But a six and a half, a lot of speakers are six and a half. Boom, six and a half, there's your vocals, there's your thing, it fills in the gaps, they sound lovely. They're, they're the nominal choice, you get those. You get them, they're not too big, they're not too expensive. Actually, these are probably the most expensive ones when they're not on sale. The big 590s go on sale all the time. The 570s are never in stock. The 580s are always there and they never go on sale and they want like $900 a piece for them. Are they worth $1,800? Probably. I just know to wait for sales. I just, I can't tell you to buy them because I know they're gonna be cheaper. I have those feet off of them, by the way, they're over there, so it could lay on its side. Um, if you're wondering why they're like this, why they're specifically laying down, pointing to the wall, 
is because I've always considered putting a theater up here because I have these big structural beams. And this one is just far enough forward where there's like a 10 inch gap between the railing and the back of this. And I could, I could hide a electric, pole, electric screen there. And at night it's be dark and you could hang a projector over there and shine it on the screen. And you could just sit up here with your friends instead of going into my dank, dark basement. Come on everybody, let's go in my basement to watch a movie. My unfinished basement. No, 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 imagine being up here and watching a movie. So of course that's, it was like, all right, I'm gonna test this. Let me test some shit. So I put the speakers, I originally had the boot carts and the stands firing in. Then I turned the boot carts around, firing them at the wall, which added four and a half feet plus the bounce back. So nine feet. What are you telling me? Okay. Um, so it adds, from going here to where I was sitting in the middle, now add nine more feet of, of travel and then spread the sound out from one point that far and then that far. So the entire sound on both sides was now coming from the entire wall. And I'm like, this is amazing. I'm all about playing around. Rear channels, there's no fucking, there's books I'm sure that say this is how you're supposed to do a rear channel. Fuck those books. Experimentation is free. Laying a speaker down on the side cost me nothing but taking the legs off of it. All right, let me go get a bigger speaker from the boot cards. Got the 580s. I had the 570s and 580s. I could put the 570s inside, but just wash that wall with sound. So when I'm watching a car drive by in a movie, it goes car sound, car sound, fucking car sound. And then these, if you didn't notice, these are facing backwards as well. So these are just shooting into the void. So Jet goes by, it's ah! I, I can't let yell as loud as these can yell. Ah! And it's just omniscient. So I have these speakers pointing away from where we're sitting and those speakers pointing forward. And it gives you this wonderful airy sense of like bigness. Center channel is not big enough. We'll talk about that in a second. 570s. So I think these are the best in the JBL studio lineup. In fact, the guy that I talked about, the guy that gave me the, the, the design acoustics, I convinced him to buy the 590s. He bought the 590s. He used them for a week, said, I don't like these. And I understand why. I understand because I have the same issues with them. And then he said, well, I'm going to get the 580s or the 570s. So we got the 570s. He then proceeded to machine different feet. These are little rubber feet. He machined one and a half foot aluminum feet to get them off the fucking floor because they're so stupidly low. He loved these speakers. He had those weird orb speakers. I forget the name of the guy that made them. They're like the eight inches on the side and then it had like two balls with like a vertical wrap around tweeter. Oh fuck, I could almost remember the name of them. Gallo, he had those Gallo reference speakers. I can't believe I fucking my brain worked just now. And those speakers are like eight or nine thousand dollars. He liked these better. I like these better than those. Because here's the thing. Remember how we were talking about vocals and mid-range? Let's presume that you have a subwoofer, right? This is taking over the super low end. Now you have two very small, very controllable five and a quarters. The faster you can move the speaker, the more control you have. That's why the big eights are like doing this, trying to make vocals happen. And you can't slow it down and stop it and move directions. They're just big. Six and a half do it better. Five and a quarters do it even better. So you have enough space in here to still get low end. You get the not small enough drivers to control it faster and you still get the fucking horn. These are the best of the JBL Studio line. The problem is they're minuscule. You gotta put them up on chairs or stands and no one's gonna do that. I would, if you have, if I had to get rid of everything else in the line, I'd keep these and get rid of the 530s and 580s and 590s. Get rid of them all, keep the 70s. These are the best of the JBL Studio 5. That's why they're the fronts and not those. I should have probably put those as the fronts but I like the way these sound more. If I can make my desk, if I could have my actual computer desk where I watch, we'll go there in a bit. If I could have my computer desk actually just have fucking 570s there, which I can technically, once I get rid of the desk and turn it vertical, um, I would fucking do it. Cause that's the, that's, that's the be all end all of the JBL studio line. And I'll stand by that forever. Now the new ones are coming out, we'll see how that does. You, we we're talking about the uh, triangle, tower speaker. And I said, this is the lowest one. It's the Borea. It's got a soft dome. If we get the higher end model, you get that crazy tweeter. There's the crazy tweeter. It's not on the back, but these are the Esprit 
series, which is the next one up. And this is a $900 center channel, which is actually only worth $700. The $900 is $200 more than the normal one because of the white finish, which is very nice, by the way. And we've got our dual fake phase plugged five and a quarters. Yeah. And then two ports and then a tweeter. And this thing is a detail monster. Does a two model low end? No. Does it spread as nicely as the JBL? No. I actually don't prefer, I had this on the rolling TV thing. I don't like it as much. But you, if you listen to it, if you actually are listening to it, if something breaks on screen, if someone drops a glass bottle, glass comes out of this. Just to tell you that, oh, by the way, someone broke a bottle. So yes, that tweeter is doing something. That $700 price tag is doing something. It is there for a reason. If you're sitting right in front of it, it's beautiful. Is it big enough for a center channel? Not in my opinion. If I was gonna use it as a center channel, I would have to do all sorts of funky shit. I'd have to add a subwoofer underneath it. I'd have to just, because this isn't gonna do enough, it's not low end that it wants. I want more lower mid range. I'd have to do a whole thing where I like bi amped this and like a 10 inch and then give it like some real meat. Make these drivers cut off at like 300 hertz. 300 hertz and above, they could probably scream. 300 hertz and below, put it to a, a, a eight inch or a 10 inch below it and give like fill it in. That's the only way I could use that, that center channel. Do I love it? Yes. They gave me the option triangle to either keep that or keep the triangle subwoofer. Remember the triangle subwoofer? That thing was a fucking joke. It was like, you should not be making subwoofers. It was way overpriced for the performance and they knew that. But that thing at least performs. So I think we're done up here, right? All right, let's, let's move now to the office. I'm gonna fill this card up, I'm a psychopath. So I was just up here to do the headphone looky look see around my office. Um, CRT display, this computer, sort of like CRT old school gaming. No speakers, because CRTs don't like speakers. I actually do have a couple that have, you know, shielding, but whatever. Here are the only speakers in my office. They're the only ones that have ever been in my office, I think. They are the iLoud MTMs, and I bought them because iLoud won't get back to me on emails, you motherfuckers. So when these first launched, these were $350 a piece because they're studio monitors and you have to pay for them individually. I'll put some lights on. Light. That light? No, it's fan. Will this actually make light go? Hold on. This one? No, this one? Yeah, there we go. Um, why? Why, Zeus? Why? Why these? You have so many speakers. Why these? Why? Why? Remember those little ones? Little ones? Why? Why these? Because these speakers have room correction. There's a, there's a little microphone that it comes with. In fact, I think it's here. I kept them with it. Holy Jesus, God. All right, hold on. It actually came with one per speaker, and one of them didn't work, so it was dead in arrival. Here's a microphone. You point this at where you're looking, from where your head is sitting. You plug the other end into the speaker, and you say, fix it. And it does. It goes whoop, 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 whoop. Just like curly. Whoop, 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 whoop. And then it adjusts the curve of the frequencies based on where you're sitting and the effects of the room. And you do that individually on each speaker. If you want to do a real sick near-field surround sound, you get seven of these, motherfucker. <laughs> oh. And then you look at the back and it's got all digital controls, low frequency extension. It can go down to 40 hertz. These speakers will do 40 fucking hertz. Not very loudly. In fact, it'll just start distorting out of this fucking port on the back, but it'll do 40 if you want. Currently it's set to do 60, flat low frequency, flat high frequency, which is flashing for some reason. Why are these blinking at all? Are you supposed to blink? Then it's on calibrated flatter desk, it's on calibrated, and we have plus four DBU. We're feeding an XLR out of my Motu M2 interface so I can control the volume on these speakers versus control the volume on my headphones, which I'm using the Sony's. But, but here's the thing, the Motu also has RCA outputs. It's got balanced outputs in a quarter inch and RCA outputs, and the RCA outputs go all the way over there and all the way over there onto extensions, and then SVF, SVS uh, Micro 3000, or 3000 Micro. So that is the little tiny $700 dual port subwoofer that SVS sent me. And I'm like, this fucking thing's a monster. So 
I did the sub crawl. I put the sub over here where my head is usually in front of the monitor. And then I went and I crawled around the whole room. And I think here was one spot and down there and above the floor was another spot. So now the Mo2 feeds balanced to the studio monitors and RCA adjustable to the subwoofer. And if you sit here and listen to music, your fucking head explodes. I love these speakers. With that sub filling in, because if you try to do just low end with these, you're gonna push them too hard. You're gonna push them too hard and they're gonna fail. They can do it at a, at a moderate volume, but if I'm watching myself or I'm gonna be entertained, entertain me. So these things, these beautiful things sit up on top of these uh, Ion Forge stands, which thank God someone sent me because like $240 for them, which are red and blue by the way. And, um, do everything I need them to do. I will usually, usually master on them. Like I talked about in the headphone review that uh, oh, I, I use the studio, the Sony's or I pull out the, the Neumann's to do my mixing for sound demos. I trust these iLoud MTMs as much as any, uh, any audio engineer trusts their studio monitors. I paid seven, I personally paid $700 for the pair and I personally believe they're as good as any other thousand dollar monitor, even better than because of the room correction. Cause I mean that, that one there with the fucking corner, that one there, look, look at the, look at, look at it. Look where it sits, how close to the corner it sits here. That one there that sits that close to the corner would be absolutely fucking weird with the rear port if it didn't have the room correction but it does and therefore it's great. So my plan by the way at some point is to have this monitor turn vertical but I gotta get rid of these desks so that I can go below the surface so that I'm in the middle of it not at the top of it. If I ever did that I could put the 570s next to it on either side. Just a thought, just a thought. It's, it's a possibility. But anyway yeah that's that is those. That's my office. My office is a bunch of headphones that I very rarely use because I'm not shitting you 97% of the time. I let MTMs. Let's walk across the hall. There used to be a dining table here. It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know. You don't have access to the doors once you put a dining table. Welcome to the sunroom. Currently under construction for lighting and shit. 65 inch Sony OLED. Big fluffy ball. Klipsch Fortes. Fours. If you don't know about these speakers, please go watch my review. They are <laughs> I'm so glad the owner left this because that woman is topless and getting probably gonna get a pearl necklace or something. That is your rear firing 15 inch passive radiator. Where I said the heresies, the one in my home theater, have no low end. These fix that by having that. It's not active. I wish it was active. God, I fucking wish it was active. In fact, I think I heard that the new Klipsch top of the line, like the $40,000 setup, is all active and has something like this on it, which would make me come. So that rear firing 15 inch, you have to put against a wall, or in this case, a bathroom door. And then the front, is almost the same as the heresies in the basement. We've got that be beautiful juicy 12 inch that is designed to do mid range. Only this time it does mid range and bass because it's moving the back one. So it doesn't really lose anything here. And this is slightly bigger. This is almost the same. The upper horn is almost the same as the heresy, but this is larger and different shapes. So this can actually do more mid range than the one on the heresy can. So where this was only the mid-range and this was just upper, this is now actual mid-range and more mid-range and low end. These are a perfect speaker. They're perfect, they cover the whole, they have three-way, but they're really a four-way because little horn, treble, big horn, upper, tre lower treble, upper mid-range, 12 inch, lower mid-range and bass. And then of course, because I'm Zeos, we go in my closet, in my closet. I've got the Emotiva S12 there, or is it just called the 12? SE12, my bad. Emotiva SE12, which is a sub. I've got a surround sound receiver here, which that is the point one. If I put it into just stereo mode or direct mode, just these play and it's great. Here's my rear channels. 
recommend recognize these from my old apartment recognize these from the start of this video what an hour and 25 minutes ago canto bends coaxial little twe tweeter and a five and a quarter in a sealed box absolutely painful to listen to on their own can't use them sealed little cube they're so fucking adorable they sounded good everyone would have them they just didn't stick to their guns and correct them they had no low end and they were sharp as fuck you know what that means perfect back channels especially in the configuration i have here i have a whole video on home theater stuff on my other channel where I, I literally, this is the best thing ever. Because if I'm sitting here, or I have a couch and someone's sitting here, assuming someone's sitting here, you don't wanna point a speaker three feet away from them and be like, this is the rear channel. Because then this person dies, and this person doesn't get anything. So what you do is you do that. You put a very sharp, very loud, capable, because it's sealed, so it's not gonna over skirt. You point it up, and what you get is that entire corner fills with sound, reflects out and then it hits the ceiling and reflects out. So when something goes, vroom, no center channel, by the way, just these two, because like I was saying, you only need a center channel if you need a center channel. And I, oh, 9,000 steps, sweet. That's what happens when I'm doing reviews. I just keep taking my steps. So when something goes, you know, center channel is phantom, I'm sitting in the middle, if I'm watching uh, To Love Rue, uh, uh, what's his name, Rito loses his pants again. And then he goes running off and he goes running this way. And when he runs to the back, it's just everywhere. Just everywhere. I'd rather have more space behind me, but obviously there's life happens outside. So there it is. It's a 4.1 in here. Oh, and there's the other JBL uh, LSR 305. Again, just being used for Discord. I have the Fostex HP, Fostex HP A, HPA 4BL which I'm using to control that. And if I need to switch to headphones when I have an actual couch here, boom, Japanese made thing to control the volume of my Discord friends. Or Ventrilo, or Ventrilo, or Ventrilo. So yeah, just one wire comes out, boom, comes out mono, it's happy, go lucky. Just And those things are great because they stay on all the time, they don't get hot. So we have one final, this is it, we're at the fucking home stretch. We're at the fucking home stretch. We're going into my bedroom now. We're gonna go see where the love making happens. We'll walk through here. I'm not gonna stop the camera this time. I'm just gonna go into it. Just going into it. Just going right into it. Last, but holy fuck, certainly not least, put on the sex lights. These are where the ohm wall should come out and it's going backwards and making that sound come out. And it, it's fast enough. It's not like a woofer where it's slow and the big waveforms. These are fast, so it's going boop. So the delay of the two sounds coming off the wall actually just makes it sound bigger. And I've got them close enough and I've got them angled and there's adjustments on top of this. What these are for is you just put them in line with your actual output, you plug them in, so they're getting the same power from these as the, from the Alox G. You set your crossover, you set your decibels, how much you wanna go up and down to a sort of adjust for every individual speaker. Would probably be better if I DSP corrected it with a mini DSP and did delays and everything, but now these speakers are perfect. Cause I, they, that, those big, domes that shoot up into the air are fine. Absolutely fine. I was happy with these speakers for years. And then I put these on there and now they could compete with the best speakers I've ever heard at any audio show. Honest to God. Cause th those, those add on tweeters, that's a thousand dollars set. So $500 each. So you take an already $1,800 now $2,500 speaker and you throw a thousand dollars worth of directional yet still omnidirectional tweeter on it and holy shit like it is it is noticeable you turn them off and it's like oh did anything go away oh yeah i really don't don't get that sense of like really tight controlled highs it's it's everywhere it's still good it's still good it's still why i love them i still put them here when i love them but then you put those on and it's like holy fuck you get a little bit less of that ability to move left and right like i talked about but when you're in the middle Oh my, like I hate having a bed that's not even in the, in the center of the room. It's supposed to be here, by the way. And I'm like, fuck that, I like corners. I'm gonna shovel my shit in the corners and fall asleep. Like a, like a raccoon sleeping in trash. If I lean against this bed right here, right down the center of my window, right where those things are perfect. And I, I would love to get it to play music right now so you could just fucking hear it. But can anyone think of a song that won't get me copyright striked or blocked? I haven't played any music in this whole video about speakers. It's been a good, it's been a good run. 
But yeah, I have to bring strangers into my bedroom because my strangers need to need to know this is a possible setup. And I'm running it off a hundred and seventy dollar fucking Bluetooth. I'm running it off Bluetooth. In fact, there's my little Echo. Oh, fuck, I said his name. Here's my little Echo. Um. Okay. Thing that's actually just Bluetooth connected to the Loxy, and the Loxy just gets the Bluetooth signal and music plays, and it's fucking fantastic. If I want to get real anal, I have a um, a twenty foot fiber optic cable and a USB adapter, uh, a Duke U two or something that I can plug into my laptop and give it full digital signal, and then it plays, and then you really are like, holy god! I wish the fucking Amazon Alexis had fiber optic output. It'd be amazing. Amazing. Sorry, I'm puking in my own mouth. So yeah, this is the last set of speakers in my house. Fuck. That means we gotta leave the house. There's one more set. <sighs> All right, be right back. Welcome to my garage. I lied. There's another speaker set that still unboxes in my basement. There's actually a 530 brand new unbox in my basement, a set of Studio 530s. And there's the two Fluence towers with the eight inch on the bottom that I reviewed, the ones that got damaged in shipping. My plan is to bring those Fluence towers into this garage, hello, welcome to my garage, and literally hang them there from the ceiling, upside down, so they're just sort of like, boom, there and there, so that I could have just kick-ass sound. Because I did a test, and if I had the speakers, the doors open, and the speakers pointed that way, everyone down my neighbors can hear it. But if I point the speakers this way, there's enough diminishing returns that it doesn't bounce out. Anyway, here are the speakers that are out here. Can you guess what brand it is? Hold on. Ugh. Oh my God, it won't come off. There we go. Is that a picture of a swan? It totally fucking is. Welcome to the Swan D1090s. I believe that's them. It's been a while. Yeah, these are the D1090s. Slot port on the back. These are for a very brief period of time. Very brief, like two months. These were the best speaker I'd ever heard. These were only beaten by the Buchart A500s. The fucking $4,500 set. These things were 400 bucks. And you know what happened? The same thing that happens to all good Swan products. It went out of stock for months. In fact, they didn't release the video because I love these speakers so much. These were the last speakers I took out of my apartment. When I moved to this house, I packed up my ohms, I packed up the fucking Swan M3As, I packed up all my headphones, I packed up all my anime figures, I packed up all my tools, I packed everything. But I knew I'd be back and forth to get those last little things and I wanted to like watch shit on my laptop and I wanted to be able to get comfortable in my house. I left these speakers there. These were the last speakers to leave my old house. It makes sense that I, I come in here and talk about them last. Because they were good enough. They are big enough. They did enough low. These are squares. These are actually the wood square. Then this plastic fascia sticks out more. So it's actually deeper than it is high. These things are absurd. They did um, Garbanzo. If you ever meet Garbongo. Garbongo, not Garbanzo. That's a bean. Garbongo bought these for his desk. And he's like, I don't know. I can't really. They were right. He needs to back them the fuck up. Because when you put these in a room and turn them up, the magic happens. And here's the remote. Like the remote was actually busted. Like you got to like squeeze real hard. But these, if these were in stock more, everyone would have a set. Cause take all, take all the other four hundred dollar recommendations I had and throw them the fuck away. These things, fiber optic input. I think coaxial digital input also. Hold on. Yeah, fiber optic input, coaxial input, two RCA inputs, and you wire one to the other. That's got all the power and everything. These things. I, I can't, oh, I actually have, if you want to know whatever happened to my X5S little player, the one that you load an SD card, all it does is play music from an SD card with no remote. Well, actually, no, I think it has a remote. If you wanted to know what happened to it. Did you turn off? Hold on. I can't play much. I actually have these Bluetooth as well to, um, where the fuck's my Echo Dot? Oh, there it is. Echo Dot, where are you? Oh, I have to um, switch this over to Bluetooth.
Echo Dot, where are you? There we go, now we're on, It'll ha it has to connect. So that little Echo Dot used to be on the other side of the garage for some reason, I have no fucking idea why. And they just Bluetooth to these, because they have Bluetooth. Echo, temperature in California. Right now, in Los Angeles, California, it's 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Tonight, expect a low of 54 degrees. They, I felt like there were a speaker that were in my house that weren't getting used, and I loved them too much to not have them have a purpose. So all winter, they stayed in here where it was freezing cold. And all summer, in fact, last summer, they are here when it's fucking blistering hot, even though I've got the Pioneer mini splits, which I hope to get a uh, fucking, I want to get sponsored by them to do the house and all Pioneer stuff. But these things, uh, they had such a short lifespan because when I, something doesn't exist, I won't publish the review because I, I do make money if you buy the thing that I like. And I like these so much and I knew they were going to be holding up for, I thought, for fucking two years. They'd be the best speakers I ever heard. That I was like, no, 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 I'm going to hold off the review. I got to release this when they were in stock. When they were in stock, it took six or seven months. And then I ended up releasing them right around the time I moved. So I'm like, by the way, these were the last speakers I had in my apartment. They were it. I'm going to shut this back off. Even though Kona Suba was there. So that's for pure, if I just want to listen, I don't want to listen to a Spotify playlist. I just turn this on. It's got all my fucking Kona Suba and everything on it. So yeah, there it is. There's the last, uh, the last speaker on Z's property, I guess. Unless you count the ones in my, um, oh wait. There's one other speaker. Because what would Z be if he didn't have a fucking set of household speakers in his fucking car? So attached to cutting boards, so that I could put them in there and put the seatbelt over the top and it doesn't go anywhere. So just screwed into the back, permanently wired. These are Wavecrest HVL1, which are one of the first speakers that was ever sent to me by a company. The company was Wavecrest, and they literally made only this speaker. And if you look, it's rather simple. <laughs> the, the, the vinyl's melting. Big old soft dome, five and a quarter front port. Perfect. Um, put them in my car is sort of like a joke. Put them in my car and then proceeded to go to like... Um, tailgating pre-COVID obviously. So here's what happens. You got a handle now and you could put them, I put them on nice long leads and I have a little home amp in there on an inverter and we would go camping or tailgating and they've got like 20 foot of wire and I would just put them on the ground in the mud in parking lots in New Jersey and just be like, here we go. We, we, we're ready to go. And it would, bl I'd blast the shit out of these. And because they're HVL ones, uh, I, even I don't remember what I said in the review of these, um, that soft dome, whew, Okay, that soft dome was so pleasant. And I have a bit, I have a, it's not that I'm not interested in car audio, I think I fucking hate it. Is that, is, can, I, can I end this video on speakers on car audio? I don't like car audio because it's like a culture that is not, how do I, how do I put this? How do I put this while offending everyone who's into car audio? It's not a culture of quality. It's a culture of excess and amperage and power and wattage and oh my, how is there bird shit in here? You fucks, are you back? I'll kill you. There was birds last year. I had to fucking foam spray all the holes and they end up in that fucking gap. I'll murder you. Um, yeah, audio, car audio is, here's a truck, right? Here's a Tacoma. Here's where there's a speaker. I think there's a speaker in there, unless it's fake. So I think there's a speaker and there's a speaker. Zeos, what's the best car audio? Fuck do I know? Is your door a Tacoma door? Does it have two-way? Am I putting a fucking oval? Is it around? Is it in the dashboard? What are the acoustics like inside your vehicle? Is it shooting up into the glass? None of that shit you can't consistently recommend. All you can do is get a manufacturer that makes consistently okay speakers, like Infinity or JBL, and put them in there and hope for the fucking best. Because... There's no, like those, those HVL1s, I put them in the back of my car, and you know what they sound like? HVL1s. They're all enclosed in their own box, they're ported. Car audio is all fucking open baffle. Shit just shoots wherever it fucking feels like. You wanna see bad car audio? Hold on. My brother gave me this Corolla when I first moved out. In fact, he gave me this Corolla, and then I moved out of my parents' place, because I'm like, look at that bird shit. Those are piles. 
P-Y-L-E. And if I would have known my brother was buying pile speakers to put in the back of this Corolla, I would have never allowed it because they're hot garbage. In fact, one of them is so broken that it just, it just moves around. And look at it. It's got a blue driver and it's got a little tweeter. It's got an even smaller tweeter. Oh my God, it's a three-way tweeter. Those are like $19 a piece. It's all crap. It's firing into a back of it, into a void. There's no way for it to gather and be compressed and make low end. It's crap. All car audio is crap. Those could be $10,000 speakers. You know what? It would still not sound good. We're shooting them into glass for fuck's sake. You shoot, go into your house and just shoot a speaker into glass and be like, oh, this is the way it's supposed to be. The own Walsh is at least they're designed in a specific way that it's like for any room with a normal acoustical pad. This is just, just fucking gives a shit. Who gives a fuck? It's just why where I am sometimes if I'm driving for long distances. It's like, I don't want to hear the bullshit that is car audio. Sorry to piss everybody off. Oh, Zeus, you got to hear my shit. It's DSP corrected. I'm, that's fine. You're going way above and beyond. The best sound system I ever heard in a car was a fucking Uber in Philadelphia that was like a Lincoln SUV with like a 19 channel. Was it Harman Kardon or B&O? Something dumb, but you know what? It was all DSP corrected. Why is my windows open? Is there gonna be a bird shit in my car? Anyway, that's the end of this video because it's just gonna get, keep going on for on and on and on. Um, if you enjoyed this nearly two hour walkthrough of my entire fucking property and then some, please feel free to subscribe to this channel and check out my Patreon and subscribe star. Tell me if you like these sorts of things. This is my second channel. I don't give a flying fuck actually if you don't like it. I'm just doing it because I feel like I have the freedom to do it. And you don't come here and complain your videos are too long, Zeos, this is not for you. You can complain on the regular channel, which I will also ignore you. Um, yeah, thank you for stopping by. I'm glad we, we managed to assess every speaker in, on the property, because it's not just in the house. There's the house, beautiful house. Except I have no idea how to deal with shrubberies and trees. I just mow the lawn, and then I watch weeds grow and think that they're bushes. But anyway, thank you for stopping by beautiful sky today. Um, if I add any more speakers, I'll let you know. There actually was the Amazon basic speakers also in the box, but those are gonna be in the yard sale, so it doesn't count. Yeah, we're good, I'm good. Gotta take that satellite dish off the roof and uh, yeah, uh, check out hi guides and thank you.